Greetings everyone! The Drinker has joined you to talk to you this evening for a little while. How is it going, chat? Uh, you may have noticed that I am on my own currently. We've got a whole bunch of people that are coming in for this stream tonight. We've got Mauler coming in, we've got Az, and we've got Gary. They are currently, like, busy doing things right now, so I'm going to handle the introductions. Um, I think Az is currently shoveling food into his face. Uh, Gary is just finishing up a stream that he is on, and lo the long man is busy being long. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why the fuck am I dressed up like this? Well, I'll tell you. I was taking a shit earlier, right? And it occurred to me. We all get dressed up for various things in our lives, right? We get dressed up for going to work, going on nights out, going to restaurants for dinner and stuff. But here I am. We get dressed, we're doing these streams in front of thousands of people and we're dressed like complete fucking slobs. And that's unacceptable. So I thought, fuck it, I'm going to class this thing up tonight and I'm going to get dressed up. So here I am. Well, this is not bad. I don't have a I don't have a jacket to go with it, but it's too fucking hot for that anyway. So, um, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just get started like this, and we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, when the rest of the guys come into the stream, I will I will just bring them right in, and we'll get started. Um, and I've got a few other guests who are going to come on at various times tonight, so I'll just try and manage this chaos. Uh, and I've just noticed I can see the reflection of me in my fucking glasses. Look. <laughs> That's fucking cool. I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna get uh, caught up in that all night. Anyway, never mind. Hello to everyone in chat. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just start, I guess, by by doing a few super chats because I know they've been piling up while this stream was like on standby. So I'll go through some of them um, just while I'm waiting for the rest of the guys to come on. So just give me one second. Where the fuck are they? Uh, all right, here we go. Marques said, wait for it. Yeah, well, now you don't have to wait any longer because I'm here. Uh, Maka Jr. says, maybe an apocalypto stream with Rakita Law someday. Just saying, I simp for you guys every day. I think Gamora will be an unbeatable Thanos in a what if. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. She'll be the best Thanos that ever was. Um, yeah, I had Rakita on um, a few months ago and we did Train to Busan, uh, which was great. It was really good to talk to him, so I'd be happy to have him back on again. Uh, David here says, growing up, I had Monkey and Jackie Chan representing Kung Fu. I feel sorry for today's youth who have Shang Chi. Yeah, who looks like a Doom Potato Greta Thunberg. <laughs> as Northern England fan meet up when? Well, as soon as I get as into the stream, I'll uh, I'll find out for you. Um, but yeah, Shang Chi, man, fucking hell, that's a depressing movie. Um, I it's it's projected to be a, a fucking flop so far so we'll see how it goes i'm not going to be seeing it for like another 10 days yet so damn it'll be interesting to see how it goes for on its opening weekend um chucks and housing here says two-part chat in reference to the old guard and charlie's theron having nothing to work with i have to say this now with explanation charlie's is a lazy actor here's why Actors that can make any role special, like Kurt Russell, Kathy Bates, and John Goodman, for example, no matter what is thrown at them. Point being, Charlie's can do that too. She don't get a fucking pass. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think she is genuinely a good actress, I think. Um, but yeah, like, you would never know it from watching uh, The Old Guard. Uh, it really kind of felt like she was phoning that one in, like, yeah, I'm in a low-budget movie. What the fuck? I'm going to get paid no matter what, so I don't care. Um, yeah, it's such a shame because that film really felt like such a wasted opportunity. Um, you know, it, it was, it had a great idea, it had a great concept. Um, I'm not going to say it had a great cast, but you know, it had Charlie's in it. And uh, I think you could have done a lot with it. You could have told this epic story set across centuries. Um, but it just felt like a shitty low budget thriller. So, eh, whatever. Uh, Sweet says first. Nah, you're not first, but uh, thanks for the. Thanks for the super chat. Anyway, Unhinged Entertainment says, The bar is open. The drinker can give me full service. Wink, wink. Oh, don't worry, Unhinged. I'll, let, I'll service you big time. Uh, let's see. I'm just waiting for the rest of them to refresh here. What's the rest that we got here? Yeah. Uh, Charlie's is the only femme who's believably kick-ass. She's wasted and real, but you, she's acting in shite. Yeah, I mean, when you see things like Atomic Blonde, 
Um, she was great in that. Like she genuinely like bulked up and got a bit of muscle for the role. And the the fight scenes that she does um, in that stairwell and it just goes on one continuous take. It's great. It kind of uh, it makes it somewhat believable that someone of her size and build could take on multiple opponents. So yeah, I liked it. Um. Yeah, what's this one here? Uh, something Vizkid says, I love how the insane immortal that got drowned for hundreds of years kind of sets up a sequel. Not confident it'll happen, though. Yeah, that was entirely set up just so they could get a sequel. Um, and it's a shame, again, because it's a, it's a pretty horrific fate and it's quite well constructed, you know, getting locked in an Iron Maiden and just dropped on the bottom of the ocean and just caught in this endless cycle of drowning and then coming back to life. Um yeah, it's it's pretty awful, but um, yeah, it was just purely to get her back for the end of the the film, um, so they could do that epilogue. Uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, more super chats. So, uh, where did I get to? Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, Derkun says, "Hi, drinker. Have your books in my queue of audiobooks for my commute, but due to circumstances, my only option was importing them for tor from Tortuga." <laughs> yeah, I get where you're going. Uh, sorry about that. I'd like to correct it now. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Um, and I appreciate the donation. So always forgiven. Uh, Irish John says, "I saw your World's End vid. Um, I was that guy who watched it completely blind, knowing nothing other than the title. It was a trip." Uh, yeah, did you go into it not having watched the any any of the other um, Cornetto trilogy movies? If so, yeah, it must have been really fucking weird, but oh, great film. Uh, Durkin also says, so please consider this roughly £12 uh, a down payment. It's for trying out the first book. If I stick with the series, Liam Neeson voice, please, I will find you and I will pay you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, man. G-Man 2020, critical drinker, love the Farscape video you made. Would love your take on uh, Chain of Command from Next Generation. Much love from the Galway, Ireland. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, is Chain of Commands, um, is that where Admiral Jellico comes in um, and takes over the Enterprise, or is it where Data gets um, like put as captain? Uh, either way, both good episodes. Um, but yeah, we need to rewatch it properly to give you a, a good analysis of it. But generally, fucking love Next Generation. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all good stuff. Uh, ah, we've got the long man here, so I'm going to bring him right in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's happening? <laughs> He's here. Hello, mate. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, man. Thank you for joining me this evening. Man, you look fantastic. Oh, look at that look you got going. What is this open boss? Was I supposed to come dressed very well? I did not know that. Well, I mean, generally, you are pretty well dressed. You've got the gas mask. You've got the business suit. <laughs> you've got the tie. So I think you're all right, man. You're yeah, all right. Gas mask is yeah, yeah, it's top tier, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Cool. Yeah. Like, like, that's the next level fashion accessory. Some people go for like a cane or, or sunglasses or, or, you know, any other thing. But nah, you've taken it to the next level. You've got a mask. That's I like it. It's very clean. I keep, I keep it very clean. No rust. Well, you actually were way ahead of the curve because you predicted COVID and everything, and you're like, "Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna avoid that shit. I've got a gas yeah, mask." Yes, I didn't have to do shit. I was just like, "Yeah, mask's already on." You know, exactly. Yeah, they don't have to. And, and nobody gives me weird looks anymore. It's like, oh no, that's completely normal. <laughs> it's great stuff. Yeah, finally, I can blend in. <laughs> now yeah, they talk so about movies. Yeah, so I was going to say, on a, on a scale of 1 to 0, how excited are you for Shang-Chi? Um, why didn't you offer me anything in negative numbers? What's going on? Why are you uh, trapping me? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I figured it was somewhere in between, like, 1 and 0. That's one of those movies where, like, Az, Fringy, and whoever else are like, oh, I'm going to go see it, and, I don't get, and I'm just like, oh, fuck yeah, it's still coming out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a thing. I was going to say the Eternals is coming out too, but I wouldn't bank on it if uh, Shang Chi totally flopped. <laughs> I, I reckon they're just shoving them both out. They're going to look at the results and they're going to be like, "Right, the MCU's fucked. <laughs> like, what yeah. are we doing now? Abort the MCU. Abort <laughs> Phase Four. <laughs> it's like, bear with me though. The Raimi trilogy will save us. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. Spider Man. It's all about the nostalgia, isn't it? Oh yeah, man, and and if that works, we're gonna get loads of it. Like we're just gonna keep piling it on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And It'll to be honest, a... like I would rather they did that than just try and force this uh, this phase four crap on us. Like I would take cheap nostalgia over the Eternals any day of the week. 
Oh, fuck, I don't even know what the... What is it? It, they can't even make stories now without fucking up everything. So it's just like, that's like become expected. It's just like, yeah, 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 they always fuck up everything. It's fine. Like the Eternals will screw with everything we know about the MCU so far. And I've seen people who are fans of the MCU basically being like, oh, come on. It's fine. Like, it's not why we're here. We're, we're here to see some stories. It doesn't have to connect to everything else. And I was like, isn't that the whole fucking point? <laughs> like, what's, yeah. It's like, I mean, okay. <laughs> This is the problem that you're going to have going forward, right? Like, the more of these characters you introduce at this stage, you've got to come up with increasingly ridiculous explanations for why they've never been involved before. Yeah. You know, and, and so you've got the Eternals, which are like these super powerful immortal things, uh, whatever the fuck they are. And it's like, yeah, we've got to come up with some great explanation for why they've never interfered until now. You're like, I don't care. They're, they're, we don't. They, they missed the boat, okay? If they haven't helped out at this point, then I'm not interested in them. Yeah, you could tell where they made the um, the sort of the Eternals in a, in a general sense. They were like, all right, we're going to have lofty dialogue. These guys are the best. They're powerful. They care. And then someone over at Marvel was like, what, what was the whole Thanos thing, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, 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 you, you could tell someone was like, what do you mean? Oh, um, well, you know, they were busy. <laughs> it's because Kang didn't want them to get involved into this stage, yeah. you know? Kang fuck off, such fuck off, a... Loki, fuck off, Kang. <laughs> Fucking, I hate this. I hate what this has become. Dude, uh, you know, Fringy's been working on a on an end game script. He wants to do a video on that, and like every once in a while, I'll be like, you know, oh, you're gonna talk about Kang at that point. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Loki's not. Like, I just, like it's, you try and involve it. And it makes it impossible to break down any stories in the MCU. And it's the same for um, Black Widow, for example. When I was making the video for this, you know, I'd have some people be like, oh, you're going to mention Kang? And I was like, I don't fucking mention Kang. Fuck Kang. Like, it just ruins everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, there's so many things to pick apart with Black Widow anyway. Like, if you try and bring all the Loki stuff into it, Jesus Christ, you like drive yourself insane with, with all of that. And, like, the saddest part is, like, you know, the, the different forums for the MCU fans, they're just like, hey, Kang was a great addition because it kind of makes it so that there's no contrivances or holes in any of the MCU stories now. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, now he's just the ultimate escape tool for any shitty writer. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, Kang didn't want that to happen. So, oh, fuck off. Yeah, it's, it's like that, that whole, like, um, thing that Red Letter Media did once, where it's like, whenever something ridiculous happened in the prequels, it's like, oh, it was the will of the Force. It was the, oh, God, yeah, I've gotten that <laughs> loads. They do that a lot for the sequels as well. Like, whenever crazy shit happens, it's like, well, the Force, you know? Force works in mysterious ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like religion explaining away natural disasters and stuff. That's <laughs> mysterious, you know? <laughs> I have to say though, like I don't know if you've like been watching much of the what if stuff. Um, I've seen the first two episodes. Yeah, but well, I just got done watching the the latest one with um, Doctor Strange, and I was shocked. It was quite good. Ah. Like, I didn't I didn't expect that at all. It was really dark, um, but like yeah, really well written. It was a bit confusing to begin with because it like it kind of implied that like um, his girlfriend was always in the car with him when he crashed initially. Which she totally wasn't in the film, so I don't know how that happened. But then, yeah, the rest of it is like him continuously trying to undo it and prevent her death. But then, like that's like necessary for him to become the Sorcerer Supreme. So yeah, like it, it's just like a little bit of um, uh, just repeating the same cycle over and over again. Him getting more and more desperate and evil as he resorts to other things to try and stop it. But yeah, it's right. quite good actually. Yeah, it's got a very dark ending. So you've seen all four then, have you? I've seen the I've seen all the others. I haven't seen um, the Star Lord one. That's the only one I haven't seen. That is, I just, from what I understand, that's the worst one I've seen. That one. <laughs> yeah, that's precisely why I didn't watch it. I was like, eh, this is gonna make me mad. It's like, I, I genuinely think if Wakanda was a man, then the entire MCU basically exists to suck his dick. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dude, they just casually tell us that he gave an argument to Thanos, so that it, that changed his mind. It's just like, oh boy. Yeah, I heard about that, but like, fuck's sake. If only the rest of the characters in the MCU were smart enough to argue. Do you remember as well, Doctor Strange does argue with Thanos in Infinity War, and they're telling us that, yeah, you know, T'Challa, he had the right argument. No one yeah, else came up with it. He was just better at arguing than, than anyone else, even like probably the smartest man in the MCU. Yeah, of course. Um, and it's, 
yeah, that's that's kind of why I avoided that particular episode. But the others, like, were generally okay. Like the um, the Captain Carter one, I thought was fine. Um, you know, it, it gets a little bit heavy handed with the girl power thing at times, but like, and yeah, it kind of suffers from trying to condense like a two hour movie into like a thirty minute episode. But generally, I yeah. thought it was all right. It didn't come across as too mean spirited or anything. And I think they were they were generally like pretty forgiven towards Steve. You know, he still got to do stuff, and it didn't try and break him down or anything. There was just so much stuff in it that I got confused by. I was like, wait, we have an Iron Man suit now in the fucking 40s? I was like, what's, yeah. what's happening here? That, that was very convenient, wasn't it? What, what the that, fuck that does suit... it power, what's it powered by? <laughs> like... Well, they reckon the Tesseract is just shoved in there, and that's good enough. And she's like, man, I don't know. Like, It's it's a better suit than a lot of Tonys are in uh, the 2008. So it's just like, hmm. Okay. There's someone, yeah, like, is it Peggy or is it like, um, like Stark who who kind of directly handles the Tesseract as well? Like, they're able to just pick it up and nothing happens to them. I think so. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff like that where you're just sort of like, huh? Also, telling us that um, Red Skull's whole plan the whole time involved summoning a Cthulhu monster. It was like, I don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that that was a bit different. And then he just gets fucking killed by the tentacles. <laughs> That was so lame. <laughs> I know. Uh, again, like it just suffers from. I guess they had to try and condense a whole lot of plot into like a very short space of time. So like a lot of stuff's done for convenience. Um, but it's yeah, a strange it, format to be honest with you. Trying to crush two hours into half an hour. Yeah, I would rather they just told a completely different story, and that's kind of what they do with um, with the Doctor Strange one. You know, they, mm-hmm. they don't really follow the plot of the movie at all. It's just its own thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's a lot better because I want it to diverge drastically from the original rather than just trying to ape the original story, but just make it better. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's a mixed bag. Like, I'm just, I'm living in fear of when they do Tony Stark <laughs> because I know they're going to fuck him over. Like, I yeah. can just tell he's like, yeah, he's the most popular one. Everyone likes him. Everyone knows it. And so... Yeah, they're going to have to try and deconstruct him somehow. I'll have to see what they do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, it's it's a mixed bag so far, the, the What If series. Um, and then, yeah, as a, you know, joining Phase 4, it's just like, ugh. <laughs> it's just such a great experience so far. Yeah, the... I mean, obviously, not really had much so far um, in terms of Phase 4. Like, I, I never really classify um, Black Widow as being part of Phase 4. It just doesn't feel like it at all. It's like, I would just slot in with, with Phase 3 and just say it's like it's like Spider-Man 2. You know, it's just a, a hangover from that phase. It was just delayed. Because it doesn't... Um, it doesn't, it doesn't I just mean, like, in. it's what they've said is officially Phase 4, as far as I know, right? Black Widow? I guess so, but it's the, it's the I, I don't the listen for apparently. Them. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so I'm happy to keep it out of. Fa- Let's make Phase Three slightly better by not including Black Widow. Yeah, and it's like you've you've yeah you've got that, you've got Shang Chi, and then you've got the Eternals. So it's not exactly a rock and start to Phase Four. Like no, oh, we we also have heel versus baby face here. So let's bring in as. Oh my god! Oh. Holy shit! Extreme close up. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Wait, why, are, why are we all in mobile? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on with this webcam, but it is just like stuck in Zoom at the moment, and it's it's, it's lowest. Yeah, yeah, you're in potato vision right now, man. <laughs> it's it's a bad state of affairs where where my webcam looks better than yours. I know. It's like, well, I haven't got that light on, so there's like it's going to look a bit rancid, but. Uh, it keeps knocking me eyes up. Hi! Hi! Thank you for How joining you doing? us. Hey, yeah, no worries. I was just... I just uh, streamed, so I was just grabbing a bite to eat. God, as I haven't um, seen you in ages. We have to. I, dude, it's like no. been forever. You guys never, ever interact. No. On streams. <laughs> so thank God I was able to finally bring you together. <laughs> and it's, it's about family, you know. It's about <laughs> family. About it. <laughs> family. <laughs> What does the S stand for? Family. <laughs> Sex. What? Sorry. Um, I had to, I, and I had to. I had to watch Papa Gundam's latest video. I just had to. Was it the mundane Matt one? <laughs> just <laughs> watching, <laughs> watching him run from Jeremy 
like a bitch was I died laughing. Oh, it's fucking died incredible. I died laughing. Because the, oh, they were God, they, he was beefing saying. with them on he was beefing with them on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. Like and he was saying like oh Jeremy's afraid of a good debate and stuff and and you know he's he's not we're, he's not up to be challenged on his opinions and Jeremy just shares that that um, video of him just fucking running away on the stream <laughs> run <laughs> run 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 oh my my phone's gonna run out of charge bye yes yeah. going <laughs> out oh Christ <sighs> yeah. What is going on with Matt these days? He's he's like trying to rediscover his balls or something. Like, ah, I'm just gonna argue with everyone now. No, he's he's the only thing he's gonna rediscover is people hanging him. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. It's not Griff gonna happen. Got a grift. Yeah, <laughs> you know. When you've shown the whole world what a complete and utter fraud you are, uh fake you are. Uh no, it's uh it's over, dude. But hey. Gary's waiting for his taco, so if you could chop chop, please. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just talking with Mahler there about um, about What If, the Marvel's What If series. I don't know if you've seen the latest Doctor Strange one. Not the uh, latest one, no. Uh, what? What? This is, yeah, sorry, I'm just... Uh, your, your, your webcam went into I'm, earthquake. I'm, mucking, I'm mucking about with a webcam. I'm trying to... Here, should we just look at them? Yeah, there, there, there we go. Yeah, oh, you just look at my shoulder. My shoulder's so, gonna emote. Yeah, you're fine. Now you so can I get naked, and like... no one's gonna know. Shit, man! I'm just gonna take us out of it. I'm gonna let Az just run the stream now. <laughs> oh shit! No, no, please, no! I don't want it. I'm. Uh, I know. I haven't. I. I've only. I've seen the first three, and uh, I got it. <laughs> I am finding it so difficult to watch this series. I, I really... Like, even though last week's was, like, much better because it was an original story and uh, it actually did have a, an interesting hook, I'm just I, I'm just hating the, the animation style. Um, a lot of the acting feels like it's just been dialed in. Uh, so it, it's really hard for me to... It's really hard for me to try and, you know, actually get into it. Yeah. Tell, tell him what you think of the Carter episode, Drinker. Uh, see what see what see what Az thinks. All right. So, I was just saying to Mauler there. I actually quite liked the Captain Carter episode, um, and I was okay. saying there. Yeah. Although at times, like it's a little bit heavy handed with the the whole girl power thing, it never comes across as mean spirited or obnoxious. Um, and yeah, it it kind of suffers from trying to condense an entire movie down into like a, a TV episode of of like twenty thirty minutes. So there's a lot that they lose, and it's quite simplified. But overall, I didn't mind it too much. I thought it was okay. It didn't. It didn't uh, piss me off or anything. Um, and I think they didn't. They didn't try to ruin Steve too much. You know, he's still portrayed as a good-hearted guy who wants to help, and he gets to help out a little bit. Um, so, like overall, I, I wasn't too. I wasn't too like down on it. Mm. I don't know how you felt. I hated it. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> no, I was saying that. you were setting me up for that one. Um, <clears throat> I the only thing that I liked about it was the the dynamic the dynamic with um, Carter and and Steve that it did actually genuinely feel that they both loved each other as opposed to because uh, I was worried that they were just going to make it one way. Um, but as regards to the rest of it, I actually found the oh my god, you can't do that. You're a woman, just so boring because even though sure you could argue it's a product of its time because it's in the 40s you know that the people are trying to say that this is the way things are today you know they're, they're trying to say that women women can't do things yo oh, you're just a woman you're you're a repressed woman and it's they're trying yeah. to sort of palm it off as something that happens today it's not it's not at all i mean um, yeah like there, there's yeah I, I, I did forgive it on that sense because it is set during the 1940s. You know, and that, that would have been the attitude towards women back then. Like, they were very much not expected to do any kind of combat-related roles. Well, if a woman smashed through a wall or <laughs> smashed through some doors, and then uh, I would think, wow, that, that that's probably an enhanced 
super soldier or Dude. something, you know, an enhanced being. I wouldn't just go, I say, darling, could you when put the, the fucking kettle on? When she <laughs> smashes through all of those, like, evil people in that scene, like she's blowing up cars and hitting people across it, and then this bulky guy comes out and he's like, ha, oh, they send a woman to... to yeah. Do. And I was like, uh, if I a little frau yeah. It's like, yeah. bro, have you did you see what she's what she been doing, dude? You know, <laughs> yeah. cut you well, off, that, that, that kind of ties into what I was saying about how, yeah, it definitely gets heavy-handed with that sort of thing at times. <laughs> um, but, I, I, yeah, I didn't get quite like a Captain Marvel vibe for it, where it's like, no, we actively hate every man who's in this this show, you know. Um, yeah, it, it could have been done better for sure, but for me, it didn't bother me that much that um, I, I was really pissed off with it. Um, yeah, it I was got, a bit I ridiculous. Bored with the retelling of the same story as well. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of why I was saying <laughs> that the Doctor Strange one was pretty good because it, it goes off on a completely different tangent and it doesn't try to follow the plot of the movie really at all. So it's it's a bit different, um, and it, it's quite a good story like it's uh it's very much a study in like grief and trying to change the past and stuff and it's got a really dark ending to it so i thought it was all right <laughs> well it's the dark ending a woman takes over for steve Spring. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i will i will sacrifice myself and this this woman just kind of comes up at the end like picks up you know the eye of akama or whatever and just like oh don't mind if i do darling uh, uh yeah i'm not i i i'm struggling with this what if stuff i really am yeah never mind uh, strong g i was tomorrow? saying tomorrow uh fuck knows I, i'm not going to go see it until like the 11th it's like my mate's birthday and we're, we're all going out to to go see it then i'm gonna get fucked up beforehand because i think i'm gonna need it <laughs> yeah uh i don't think um i've stained my fingers cooking I don't think I'm going to. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to see it tomorrow. So I'm going to have to wait for the Friday night type boys to tell me what their thoughts of it are, and uh, if if it is like if it is an absolute triumph, awesome! I can't wait to see it. Uh, and if it is just going to be what it looks like it is, then I don't know if I can even be bothered. I mean, I, to be honest, like look based on the trailers, it just looks like a generic kung fu movie with a yeah. little bit of like you know supernatural magic stuff thrown in. And there'll be cameos. Uh, yeah, well, we've Let already got the abomination from the Hulk, which makes no fucking sense. But yeah, whatever. In a, in a Fight Club. Yeah, yeah. that's. Just... Well, it is Edward Norton, right? <laughs> no way. The, 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 that's that's the vaguest connection that I've got. Yeah, so I what was Abomination? That was... Um, no, uh, I'm, sorry, I, I meant that... guy's fucking name. I meant that he's from the movie that Edward Norton was in, so right. the, the, you got that. That's the, Tim Roth is the one who plays yeah, Abomination. Roth, I'm assuming Tim Roth isn't going to be in the movie, though. I wouldn't have thought so if he's just a CGI effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a feeling that it's just going to be the um, CGI... Oh. Uh, with his ears, the game <laughs> they got the ears right this time. Yeah, yeah, which makes fans go nuts. It's a triumph. Everyone, the thing is, it's relatable, isn't it? Because we all have ears, and so yeah, when we see someone yeah. else with ears, we're like, "Yes, finally, someone who looks like me." Hey, and we can relate. <laughs> but this has got—he's got, got merman ears, so I—I I don't know if I can—I can relate to them. Wow. Yeah. Bigotry. Uh, uh, you're such an ear racist, as I just I can't just see what I'm like with noses, mate. Fuck you know. <laughs> it's positively <laughs> alt right. <laughs> well, what about the Eternals? Like how, like how excited <laughs> are you about that? Has it been pushed back? Has it? No. We won't, well, it depends if Shang Chi flops. I think that seems to be the prevailing wisdom. Yeah, uh, I think there's a, there's a good chance it, it might. I mean, we've had three films pushed back, haven't we, today, yesterday, whenever. Fucking uh, Top Gun 2, man. I want to watch that film so bad. That's the reason I wear aviators all the time, because I just want to be Maverick. It's like, I could have fought a fighter jet. A closet, closet homosexual. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> even if, um, if Shang-Chi flops, they're probably not... Like, if they push back all the marketing they've done for the Eternals already, it's like, are they really going to push it back again? 
how much marketing have they really done? They've, they've released I mean, I've, a couple I've of trailers seen, onto YouTube, but I've seen me, stuff and I, things. I, I, stuff. It's Same gonna be a bizarre things. fucking movie if if like it does get delayed until like next year as well, and you know it it winds up again in like five months from now or something. The fucking marketing just be like because. <laughs> Spider Man is gonna just it's gonna it's gonna do well. And then they're gonna be like, uh oh, nobody cares about our new characters. Yeah. Well you've already seen the memes where it's like, you know, uh the, the mum in the pool with her kid and like she's just playing with like the Spider Man one and like the, the Eternals <laughs> one's just drowning <laughs> yeah. in the background like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, then it just says the, the Shang Chi whatever is just dead. This is skeleton at the bottom. <laughs> This is the thing, there's just, there's nothing to hook anyone in. Like, if you're a big fan of the MCU in general, like, you know, Shang-Chi, nothing really there. Like, it's all new characters that no one cares about. Um, the Eternals, it's a bunch of new characters that we're expected to believe just did nothing throughout all the, the Infinity Saga. Again, there's no reason to give a fuck about them. Um, they and if you're one up already, though. They fucked the reason for that up already. Yeah, because they they even say in the trailer that we were not allowed to interfere unless it was deviants, and Thanos is the deviant gene. Yeah, according to Marvel themselves. Thanos. Yeah, according to Marvel dot com. <laughs> wow, well, it's, it's proper official then. I mean, I don't uh, know. they've gone against their own. They've they've mucked up their own reason for the Eternals not getting involved in the Thanos business. I, mean, I wouldn't have accepted that anyway. Like, oh, it has to be Jeevians. It's like you destroyed half the universe. Yeah, well, like, that's, that's, these that's people a pretty are major event. <laughs> these are horrible people. Yeah. None of them's gone, no, this isn't the right thing to do to sit back and do nothing. I'm oh, I'm sure they're gonna be characters that are just like, oh, we're we're, we're such kind gods that we get involved when we do. And you're just like, yeah, you, you're great. It's uh, yeah. The, the reason I the reason I wear <laughs> the reason I wear them is to hide the fact my eyes are crossed. Oh ah. my god! <laughs> oh my god! Hey, put them back on. Yeah, ah, it makes me sick. Correct them. Correct them. Mm. I I I mean I don't know every everything that I say about Eternals. I'm kind of like this could be such a dumpster fire. It's almost kind of like I'm I'm so kind. Of, Giddy and excited for it. You know, you know, yeah, we know what it feels like. It doesn't even feel like a dumpster fire on the level of you know Captain Marvel or something, where people are are actively against it or anything. It's just mm. absolute apathy. It's just mm. one of those films that feels like it could come and go and nobody would even notice it. I just don't know what the hook's meant to be. I think the hook's meant to be Game of Thrones. I mean, I yeah, think, you know, it's it's meant to be Jon Snow and and uh, Rob Stark. And when they cast it, they Game of Thrones was probably at the peak of its interest, and then they were like, "Oh no, everyone fucking hates Game of Thrones now." <laughs> yeah, like, no, what have we done? It's it's almost like as well, like you know, remember Selma Hayek? Remember how you got a hard on for her in like Dust Till Dawn and stuff? Well, she's back, but she's old now. She's, she's back just, 25 years later. Forget about that. <laughs> but she's still kind of hot, and you probably would. I definitely still would, yeah. I mean, she's oh, old yeah. as fuck, but yeah, she doesn't seem to have aged in like the past 20 years. So yeah, good on her. I can't you say know, the same about Angelina Jolie, though. She looks like a skeleton that's kind of been animated. She's, I think she's looked like that for quite a few years now, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. The power of Hollywood. Yeah, the power of plastic. Keeping surgery. the dead, keeping the dead alive. <laughs> is she, uh, her and Brad officially divorced and stuff now, or is? I just can't yeah, remember any. I just can't remember anymore. Who's? I think that must have happened. Like, damn, yeah. it was couple, good several years ago, easily. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. He, I kind of don't care. He's probably better off with her. You know, you got to jettison that dead weight. It's not. It's not that much. It probably just if you, yeah. Jettison just floats. Floats off. <laughs> pretty, pretty, the average person could just bench press Angelina Jolie with no problems. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. true. Yeah, ninety pounds, no price, easy. I, I tell you what, you know, because we're talking all, all about <laughs> these things that we're we're not really bothered for. You know, like um, Eternals and Shang Chi. <laughs> oh, good. Tell you, that. What, <laughs> tell you what, we're all excited about is Cowboy Bebop. That just. 
that looks like a winner. That's one of yeah. those things where I haven't seen the source, so I'm just like, I'm gonna miss this one's pain if there is pain. Assuming, I mean, yeah. See, I'm I'm not familiar too much with the the original anime, but like when I saw the the images and stuff of what it's meant to be, and then what Netflix are actually delivering, it just made me sad deep down inside. It's like, no, you've lost everything that seemed to be vibrant and interesting and, and fun about this original show. And I just think, like, if you can't commit to it then just don't make anime shows like that don't make live live action animation or adaptations of stuff like that because you don't have the ability to do it I, I got a question for you for you fine gentle folk all right mm -hmm. cowboy bebop i would very much call it a, a niche franchise all right i mean just thoughts on that initially yay nay sure uh, I, I think that's fair yeah, I mean, it's pretty big in terms of the, the anime world, but, like, yeah, outside of that, I don't think it's got much... So, okay, certainly in the Western sphere, shall we say. In the Western yeah, yeah, sphere, yeah. Okay. Cowboy Bebop's a, a, a very much a niche uh, anime. Uh, Netflix is obviously trying to create a Cowboy Bebop live action to appeal to the West. So if you're a niche... Um, if you are a, a niche title in the West, trying to be pushed to the West, then your major audience would be that niche marketplace. And they've you done everything they possibly can to go away from that. Yeah. It, it's... You've got to appeal to the core fans. and it, <laughs> I've made the same argument in a video where I've talked about the, the Masters of the Universe as an example, but it's just the same thing that gets played out time and time again. And yeah, now you've got this, this idiotic actress going like, oh, well, I'm sorry, we couldn't travel back in a time machine to, to get my parents to fuck with someone else to make a different version of me. It's not how time machines work. Anyway, um, yeah, like, just it just came across as absolute salt just flowing out. You know, fuck you. How dare you criticize me for looking completely different from this character that you totally love? Yeah, it's, uh, mm. it's, it's the absolute worst way to conduct yourself. And it's just like a rookie mistake for a, you know, for any actor that's, that's playing a role beloved by fans. You know, you're supposed to be better than that. You should just shut the fuck up if you're in doubt. You know, if people are criticizing you, just rise above it because that's your, your job. Yeah, her responding was just the stupidest thing that you could have done. Uh, all you've done now is not really draw attention to the show, but draw attention to the fact that you're a snowflake, you don't give a shit about the fans, so now the fans are like, right, okay, why should we give a shit about your show? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's... it's <laughs> Like you say, the, the, the very people that you are going to need desperately to make this a success in the West, the core fan base that are big fans of the original anime, you have just turned them all away from you. And you've made them actively dislike you just for being a total asshole. You know, and she could have diffused it so easily just by taking a different tone in that video and just said, hey, you know, yeah, I don't I don't look quite the same as the character and we, we had to make some changes to the outfit just to make it like practical. Um, but you know what? I just I'm just committed to doing the best job I can, and I just want to like have fun with this role and, and deliver something that people enjoy. Yay, great! You've, you're going to get everyone on your side then, because you're not coming across as antagonistic. But instead, you know, she does the exact opposite of that. I mean, there does just appear to be uh, an adversarial relationship between. It's so weird because it, it it legitimately feels like Hollywood just just hates its audience, hates like literally disdain has disdain for its audience with the stuff that it's putting out, which the way that they speak, the tweets they put out, the uh, the interviews that they do, uh, the way they weaponize their access media. Um, so it, it's so counterproductive to actually develop it, and and. You notice that the ones who keep stum, or the ones who just uh, decide to say no, we're, you know, we're saying no to you, you know, deplatformers or you, cancel culture people or whatever. No, uh, they're the ones who actually are starting to get a little bit of uh, traction and thrive a wee bit. Uh, but I don't know. Hollywood is just actively, actively appears to hate people that that want it, that 
should be their target audience. It's it's always the same, you know, particularly because we're so focused on remakes and, and reimaginings and reboots or adaptations of things that already exist. You know, the core fan base is the people that you desperately need to win over and get on your side. And so you need to do everything in your power to to just placate them and reassure them that you're going to do a good job and you're just focused on on making the best product that you can. Not many people are going to criticize you if you take that kind of approach. And yet, yeah, like you say, they, they just seem to be intent on pissing people off. And I don't understand why, because it's, it's the worst thing you can do. I mean, we saw it even with Saints Row this week as well, when they, you know, released the trailer for Soy Row. And it's got, <laughs> yeah. It's got God, nothing. that looks awful. It, it looks, yeah, it just looks like a, a, a fucking hipster's paradise. Yeah. It looks dreadful. And they've what? even said, oh, yeah, we've changed all the, the edginess and we've gone away from the edginess. And they, they, would, they were saying all this, that, and the other. And somebody went, so you, you're making a different game then? Yeah, that, that was the tweet that I think I shared. Because they, they summed it up perfectly. It's like, well, why are you doing it then? Because like, clearly you don't want to make Saints Row. You want to do something completely different and just give yeah. it the same name. Call you... it Hipster Heights. Yeah. Or whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to call it. But... Uh, but then they were just like, "Hey, it's gonna hi," and it's like, "Oh!" But have you seen the like the group behind it? Have you seen like the devs behind it? It's like forty-five-year-old no. men. It's like fifty-year-old men and shit. So it, it the, feels like they're so out of fucking touch. Yeah, they're but, they're, the but they're the people want. that should remember. They should remember the original Saints Row, and they should appreciate it. Or do they have that kind of look of uh, of male feminists? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They have that the stench of soy about them. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, oh my god, surprising. we are we are just gonna be amazing with our new Saints Row. It's gonna appeal to all the kids because we're so pro kids. Basically. When did the when did the games industry just get taken over by fucking useless assholes? Because oh, I remember when. Cotton. I, I remember when video game developers just didn't give a fuck, and they were like, "Yeah, we're just going to make a good game, and we're we're going to like have fun with it. And if we want to put titties in it, we'll do that. Like, we don't care, you know. And we're not answerable to anyone." And it's like, when did that change? I guess when it got more and more mainstream. Wait, more and more been mainstream for a long time. Yeah, Ma I mean, well, I mean, it's only going to grow in every single year, right? Video game industry has gone enormous now. Mm -hmm. Um. Three times like, the size of Hollywood. Just feels feels like it gets less and less edgy. I don't know, like because Saints Row is weird, man. Because I played uh, the second and third ones pretty extensively, and it's like the idea of like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna be chill with this one. It's like what? <laughs> what do you mean? Why? It's like also we're gonna we're gonna completely alter everything everyone knows about the series. Like okay, <laughs> so that sums up everyone's gonna want this inoffensive, you know. I want my tits back in games. I want my tits back in films, TV. What's wrong with it? Look, here's the thing, right? If you've got, say, I don't know, a fighting game where you've got the, the men are going all around shirtless and they've got bodies like Arnold Schwarzenegger times three, you know, you can you can show a bit of cleavage and it's it's not offensive because like the the shoe is on the other foot, you know. Uh, but like, why is that suddenly unacceptable? Like, if you're going to objectify one one side of the, the coin, you should do the other as well and just be fair about it. But yeah, it, it just it sucks That's what's the fun happening out already of though. That the, the, they are they are demonizing the male gaze, but women are gushing like a fucking waterfall when it comes to Henry Cavill in The Witcher. Yeah. And there's just no shame to it. And even we saw with the Olympic Games recently, Vice had one article uh, one day, just absolutely drooling over this dude's abs who was carrying a flag. And then two days later, like, the disgusting fetish behind female athletes at the Olympics. And it's just like, yeah, you know, just rage. how can you even be taken? Well, just how can you be taken seriously? How, yeah. when you, you're saying one thing, the, you know, the male gaze is a bad thing, and yet you drooling and, 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 uh, objectifying men that's fine 
I, I, because it's funny. It's like the the argument you always get is like, oh, well, there's difficult. There's different power dynamics involved, oh, so it's not God. the same. And it's like, well, no, it's just different things that different genders find attractive in each other. And like I've said this before, in one of my videos, where it's like, you know, women generally will find size and strength and 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 physical dominance appealing in a man. You know, not not the, they're the only things, but they're like, they're quite important things. But if mm -hmm. it comes to a woman, a man's not going to look for those things in her. He's going to look for like youth and beauty and athleticism and, and and all those things. You can't appeal to the the same exact things for each gender. We look for different things, and that's reflected in the kind of images that we want to see, the characters that we want to see, the actors that we want to see playing them. You know, it, it's and it's not wrong. It's just human instinct. And it's just yeah. so weird to kind of try and stifle one side of that. It's just, it's just ridiculous. That's that's the primal. That's the primal aspects of us. Yeah. You know, the woman's looking for a strong hunter gatherer with good genes for you know, to carry on the seed. The man's looking for a you know a youthful woman who can bear children. Uh, yeah, there's there's all these kind of like primal aspects too, which just don't get taken into consideration. We're just basically uh, highly evolved monkeys <clears throat> clinging yeah, to a rock that's floating through space. <laughs> yeah, we are, though. That's that's it. You Even know, we're just female we're just... led, female directed, black widow had plenty of ass shots. What are you guys complaining about? Going I know that, that that genuinely <laughs> did not make sense to me when I was in the cinema. I was like, I thought the whole point of having a female director was to get away from stuff like this. I mean, not that I'm complaining, like I'm happy to look at Scarlett Johansson's ass anytime you want, but uh, yeah, like you're just you're you're indulging the same exact things that you seem to want to hate. It's really weird. Well, that it was, was really actually weird, for the, that was for the lesbians. Unfortunately, that wasn't for you. It wasn't for the male. Is yeah. it? It's interesting because like so many people complain about all those shots in the other other lads' movies. It's just like you did the you did it. It's like, what, what do you mean? You can't complain. Why you complain? I don't know. Scarlett Johansson's ass sells, or maybe it doesn't anymore. I don't know. Our boobs used to sell, but they seem to have gotten suspiciously smaller in recent years. Genuinely, I'm going to have to do a deep dive on this one and find out the truth. Hey, -o. do the research. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be Make tough. Make the I'm, sacrifice. I'm We're up gonna, for it. Yeah, I'm like, do, the, do the research. Yeah. It's going to be the longest video I've ever made. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson's breasts, right, guys? We're what going happened? in. Yeah, a, a critique of Scarlett. You gotta, gotta make it. <laughs> Enter several parts. After looking at for hours and hours and hours of Scarlett Johansson's breasts in various films, yeah, um, could I could I take a little um, jump out of this just to go through some of the super chats because yeah, I'm just yeah, quite yeah. aware that a lot of them have been piling up while we've been doing this, um, oh. so I thought I'd just get through a couple. We will give you permission. Thank you, more. Thank you. Um, uh, here was the first one. Oh yeah, Robbie can hear oh. said, uh, "Ahoy, drinker! Ahoy, matey!" I'm a middle-aged man from a U.S. Navy family background and wish to pitch your talking points for a four-hour hunt for Red October stream. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a pleasure to review that movie. Uh, man, I'd forgotten how good it was. But uh, yeah, I just did a review of that on my second channel. Hunt for Red October. Fucking great. Love it. Um, Osset217 says, Nerf is making an alien's licensed pulse, pulse rifle with working digital ammo counter. Fucking sign me up. I'll have one of them. Um, Sam School says, here to sponsor Tatiana. Well, she needs your support. Thank you. Uh, we make fun of her, but all secretly know she's your muse drinker. <laughs> she is. Mm. She's my original strong female character. Mm -hmm. my <laughs> well, I tried to break her on a Saturday night, but it never happens. Uh, Mike the Bike says, episode three of What If had good writing, the rest is Tizmy. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Yohef says, just read June. You recommend uh, June Messiah? Oh, sorry, just read Dune. Uh, do you recommend Dune Messiah? Uh, no, I, I'm more of a fan of the original book, to be honest. I think the the rest of the series suffered from a uh, like law of diminishing returns a little bit. Um, but yeah, um, second one I really liked, Dune Messiah. Eh, I was a bit iffy on it, uh, but it has been about 15 years since I've read them all. Uh, John Andrews says, would you ever consider covering Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy? It's a great film, and I'd love to hear your take on it, given your writing background. Uh, so I did wait. I did watch it. Like, man, well, like ten years ago when it first came out. Um, mm -hmm. But it was. I remember it being a really good film. Uh, quite complex, quite slow paced, um, but pretty decent. Mm, so I loved it. I, I would. I would not be against doing a, a stream on that. 
Uh, farewell Thunderchild says, I mentioned Farscape in your uh, SC catch-up stream, and then a few days later, you did your vid. Coincidence? Well, I have the power at War of the Worlds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been wanting to talk about Farscape for ages, man, and it was a, it was a great experience to talk about um, probably one of my favorite episodes, which was um, Different je Destinations. Um, I mm -hmm. thought it was such a well-written episode, just great TV, um, and such a well sort of self-contained Farscape episodes uh, and really fucking dark ending. So, yeah, I, I consider that a great, great bit of TV. Farscape was never shy of dark endings. Yeah, um, lots of dark shit happened in that show. It was neat. It really was, yeah. Um, probably a bit too much goofy, quirky shit that happened as well that was probably their, their downfall. But, yeah, <laughs> when they were on form, they absolutely nailed it. Um, NB says... Uh, did your dad not teach you to tie a proper Windsor knot? <laughs> Pretty good for being inebriated, though. Look, much love, mate. No, I just do a half Windsor. I don't know how to do a full Windsor because it's fucking confusing. Uh, Big Prick says, Hi, Drinker. Great look. Was looking forward to this. Cheers, man. Uh, SMW175 gave me a £4 super chat, so thank you. Uh, aye, that'll do it for now. I'll catch up <laughs> on the rest of them in a little bit. <laughs> Don't want to, I don't want to like exclude you gentlemen for too long from this. No, no, uh, it's fine. It just it's all allows good. me to rearrange my room a little bit. Yeah. I was going to ask you as well. Um, are you excited for Resident Evil? Welcome to Raccoon City. Jesus Christ. Why don't you shit on more of us for fuck's sake? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Leon Singh Kennedy. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of good news <laughs> at the moment. I don't know what to say, man. Just all, I mean, all shitty remakes. This film's hilarious, though, because this film is coming out in two months. This film's coming out in November. And not only has the... Not, and, this, and this is a theatrical release. Uh, and so not only have we... Uh, it's two months away, two and a half months away. We've not seen a trailer. This was the first time we got a first look at yeah. any of the characters. This film is going to be a disaster they are hiding they've been hiding it for so long and now they just couldn't get away with it so i think after they saw the bebop the cowboy bebop disaster they're like quick quick get a lookout get a quick get a lookout i mean it's it's frustrating because like with these shots i don't know if they are just publicity stills or if they're actually from the set and this is how it's all going to look and everything but yeah the actors that they've got Leon, it looks like a completely different person, is clearly a very different ethnicity. Um, Claire just looks like a fucking frumpy, like, English <laughs> teacher or something. Like, just, like, the worst actress you could have picked for a character like that. She's supposed to look tough. Claire's, Claire's meant to be, like, 19. Yeah, she's a college student, isn't she? In, and she, she looks like a mid-30s -thir mid mum in there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. And so, Leon, I mean, Leon Singh Kennedy, I don't know what what decision was that, for fuck's sake. Yeah, it's, it's because this is a this is an iconic character in the franchise. Like, we all remember Leon, you know, we remember him from Resident Evil 2, we remember him from Resident Evil 4, and he's awesome, he's a great guy. Um, but you have a very well-defined look for who that guy is, and they've completely broken it. And it's such, that guy could have played Carlos quite well. The, the actor that they've got could have played a new character, could have played all manner of man of characters. And then when the director of the film said, "Well, the trap is getting somebody that looks like the character, but but can't embody what the character is about," and I'm just like, actors, <laughs> no way, bro. <laughs> they can act. They can do stuff. Actors can do things now. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Yeah, did you did you see <laughs> Iron Man? Did you did you see Captain America? Did you see Thor? Did you see Black? Oh, I hope you didn't say Black Widow. <laughs> but it's just like you know, what a dumb, absolutely stupid. I thought this guy's got to be related to you, Ball. Surely, it's got that look about it, hasn't it? The the thing is, the the shot of Lisa Trevor looked okay, and I was thinking, oh, okay. Uh, they've they've kind of captured the essence of that character. There's just enough humanity there that you feel pity for her, but she's like horrific and deformed. 
So she's got that mm. monstrous aspect, and you think, oh, okay, and then you see, yeah, you see Leon and Claire, and you think, oh no, you, you don't understand, no. I don't know. I thought it. I thought it mask looked cheap as fuck. I don't know. Like it didn't look like uh, Flash or whatever that had been worn. It just looked like something she grabbed from a local supermarket, popped a bit of hair through the eye. That Who looked knows? a bit awkward. Yeah, I, I like. Yeah, I, I don't know what it's ultimately going to look like when they get to round to to shooting it, and you know when you see it in you know in action. Um, yeah, but I'm glad that she's in it because I, I like that that character. You know, she's quite horrific, and it's like one of the most tense sections of the the remake when you're in those underground tunnels and you're just trapped with her. Local supermarket. What kind of store does Mola go to? Halloween. When it's Halloween, they'll sell stuff like that. Okay, not all year round. We're actually on the way to Halloween. It'll be great. Lisa Trevor mask. Yeah, give me one. Yeah, give me why one. not? But yeah, yeah. we're getting closer to Halloween. Yeah, um, this is this this is your favorite time of year, isn't it? You're one of those weird people that thinks Halloween's better than Christmas. Uh, normal people. You Halloween deviant. Rule. You wow. Deviant. Halloween rules. <laughs> so Christmas, it's all it's Christmas, dude. I need Gary here, he'll help me. He's he's team Halloween. Yeah, he, he's he just fucking said around on nice. his own live stream. Gary just being a prima donna as always, you know. Wow. <laughs> Thank Gary. We'll just wait for you, shall we? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he is our leader without you. He is our leader. <laughs> we must do as he well, whatever. I don't know. Like maybe this Resident Evil series, like this Resident Evil movie, will get me nostalgic for the Mila Jovovich films. It would, have to, series. it would have to go some to do that. I, I didn't. I didn't find the. I thought the first one was okay. The uh, first two, first two were somewhat connected to the games. Once you got, oh past yeah, yeah, that, the second though, one is the uh, yeah. Is generous of you to say that. <laughs> I, I'm saying somewhat, and I'm really stressing that. Like the second <laughs> one, particularly, like kind of borrowed elements from two and three in terms of the games. Like you got Nemesis, you got Raccoon City, you've got some of the characters there who kind of resemble their their video game Carlos, parts. You got Carlos. You had Jill oh, Valentine. Well, she had yeah, the boob tube and everything, man. Oh hell yeah, boob tube and miniskirt, dude. Uh, well, boob tubes. Well, that was a faithful adaptation for the look. Um, but then, she, but did she they, do her they, own stunts? <laughs> they can. They changed her into Jill, like Resident Evil Five, Jill Valentine, then as well, because she had the. She. They even put the um the little device the on her like chest. Thing on there and shit. Yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, so that came in in like what the fifth movie or something, because like she gets, she goes missing between films, and then you see her at the end of like Everyone one movie. Goes missing between. I know, like Michelle Rodriguez fucking died, and then they brought her back because her career was at a bit of a low point. And she's like, oh, fuck it, I'll do another Resident Evil movie. Yeah, they brought a bunch of the people from the first movie back at one point. Yeah, that was the, that was when it was all VR, wasn't it? And I was yeah. like, that was genuinely like, oh, Kit, we have 100% run out of ideas now. Well, don't they like rip off the opening of Dawn of the Dead, uh, the, the Zack Snyder, yes. James Gunn one? They're like, she's like, I'm in a happy family life. And then zombies, ah, and I was yeah. just, what the fuck is happening? And it's do, like, do, oh, it's a simulation. Do, 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 do. And then within a simulation, I, I, simulation. I love the one where, like, there's one of the movies where Mila Jovovich gets superpowers and then she gets cloned, so there's like a hundred yeah. Mila Jovovich <laughs> with yeah. superpowers and then they're like, ah, oh, fuck, how can we undo this? You know what? We'll just have them all get killed in the, the first two up. minutes of the movie and then we'll get her injected with some serum that takes away her powers. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Fucking genius. <laughs> Top tier writing right there. <laughs> Remember Wesker? Ah. Uh. Uh. Dude, the final movie, he doesn't do anything, and then he gets his foot smooshed he under just a door. Crushed in, crushed in a door. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Like, I've, not, I've not watched the last one. I just couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Don't don't do it to yourself, man. It's it's painful. Actually, actually, five was, actually was... maybe no. you should because Ruby Rose is in it. And, <laughs> she, and gets, she gets minced. <laughs> she gets thrown into a fan as she gets turned into oh. mince. It's pretty satisfying to watch, I'll, I'll be honest. I could watch that. Thing. I yeah. could watch that bit. You know, you, I'll tell you what, gentlemen, you know what we should do one time? We'll do we'll do, do a watch together. We'll watch the final Resident Evil movie 
and the the audio track will just be us laughing our asses off <laughs> for like ninety minutes. I would recommend. Is it the fourth one? Is it the fourth or fifth one? Because we we watched the six of them about a year ago, and the last one's actually disappointing. Um, if you're a fan of that series of films, which we absolutely were big fans, we love how insane everything got, how nonsense it got, how there's all kinds of like the clones, the special powers, the um. Oh, obviously, do you remember when she looks at someone through a security camera and he bleeds through his eyes yeah, and nose? Yeah, that's the end. Yeah, of that's like two. 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 Yeah, that's two. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Like, th there's all these things that happen. The, the The world turns into a desert, and then it's not. Yeah, and then it's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they go to like an ice place for. All. There's loads of crazy shit, and I'm pretty sure it was either the fourth or the fifth one that was the peak, like Paul W. S. Anderson, where it's evil nonsense. Umbrella created the ability to clone people. And the ability to recreate major cities underground, or to what? Create a bio weapon for a dead fucking world? It's like yep. what? Yeah, it's like, come on, guys, you're you're really not seeing the bigger picture on this yeah. one. And the world's dead. The really stop. With, you know, ninety nine percent of the planet zombies, and Umbrella going, we're going to sell you some weapons to fight yourselves. <laughs> Well, if no. you guys remember, we had the whole team on the top of the White House, loads of miniguns, rockets, helicopters, yeah. against an army of demons. And then the next film, they just cut to the aftermath, and it's just Mila Jovovich in, in like... A... That, set up, that set up some interesting possibilities, because like Wesker was kind of an ally to her then. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. right, we have to work together to save the human race, and like this is our last stand. And then they're just like, nah, that was a bad idea. Let's just undo all that. I think I didn't watch the film because I heard they were like the, the cuts were just so obnoxious. You just go cut, 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 camera, cut, 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 cut. That you just couldn't focus on anything because the camera is just cutting to a next frame, next frame, next frame, next next shot. We were we were disappointed by the last the last chapter. We were big fans of Paul W. S. Anderson's work and you know what? He he disappointed us. Uh he, we, here's we, a we're expecting such great content, but you know, what can you do? Here's an interesting one for us. Do a video essay about the differences of why Ruby Rose isn't sexy and Linda Hamilton is. I mean, I, I would rephrase that to like <laughs> why Linda Hamilton plays an awesome character and Ruby Rose is a walking joke. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's two actresses who I guess like they kind of share a similar build and a similar look, but like one is awesome and the other one, meh. Nah. It makes you feel a bit ill. That's the saddest well, if you, part. If you've seen Terminator, you know the answer to that question. Yeah, that's the saddest part of Dark Fate is that she like made it seem more official, seem like like validated it more by being there, and it's like, please don't, don't, don't be in. Yeah, be in these films. It's just you know she she didn't want to do T three because she didn't feel like there was a, a great story to tell with her character, and. Part of me was thinking, yeah, I respect that. You know, you were smart enough to just say, nah, this this isn't for me. It's not worth it to come back and reprise this role, um, even though it'd be a massive payday. Um, and then she comes back for fucking Dark Fate of all things, like arguably yeah. the worst movie in the entire franchise. Like, this is what brought you back, really? What was it? Well, Man, they that... probably went to her. They went Terminator with women. That, well, yeah. that was the thing, right? Wasn't it Tim Miller? He was like, he was he was doing an equivalent of this will make men squeam. Yeah. <laughs> squeam, yeah. <laughs> I felt so squeamish. I liked it when he walked that one back. That was pretty funny. Well, yeah, dude, that, that is at least like an audio interview or some kind of thing where he's just like, yeah, so I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. Like, I done fucked up there. <laughs> Yeah, he, did he say something like, I, I think I really read the rune wrong, wrong on that one. Yeah, he said, like, I thought I had my hand on the, the finger on the pulse of the fan the fan base, but I clearly didn't. It's like, yeah, fucking anyone could have told you that. This is not what Terminator fans want. I'm sorry, what fucking Terminator fan wanted to see John Connor get blown away in the opening? This is like, thanks for that. As a kid, by the way. Yeah, it's like the most obnoxious way to open your movie. Like, I am just going to actively shit all over everything that's come before it and just proclaim myself as the the new lord of the Terminator franchise. If it's it was like, the fuck. one time, I'd be like, okay, we have a mistake that they're making, but whatever. But, like, how many times have we been told, oh, man, I'm a big fan of this franchise, making this movie for the fans, and then they do something 
It's basically the worst possible fucking thing that we could imagine. <laughs> We're just like, thanks. I'm. You know what? The more time that passes, the more I'm coming to appreciate Terminator Salvation. Because yeah, yeah. Um, I, I kind of shit all over that movie in the past. Like, yeah, it's fucking boring. And it, like, uh, it's got a shitty protagonist in it. And, you know, the the focus is all wrong. But actually, no, it's it's kind of at least faithful to the franchise. Um, and it carries on the legacy of Terminator. And it moves it in a new direction. And damn, like, that that's better than any of the shit that we got after it. Yeah, I'll take Salvation over Genesis, Dark Fate, and, uh, and probably 3, yeah. Uh, three, yeah, three, would, three tries would, to do I, number two again. Basically, it's a little bit embarrassing. I, I would take three at a pinch. Um, I don't hate it. Um, I definitely see that there's massive problems with it, but like I think they were trying to, they were trying to um, continue it, but they just didn't have any great ideas with how to do it. So it's just pretty much two all over again. But I do like the ending. Wait, you like the ending where with they basically the, say like there was uh, no way to stop Judgment Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the inevitability of it. I like the fact that ultimately this is something that needs to happen in order for humanity to to kind of continue on, and like there's no way to ultimately stop it. Like I love it's, you, but I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we shall have a, a proper discussion about that Please, sometime. T two is one of my favorite films of all time, and I absolutely adore the message that fuck fate. Human beings can we can carve our own path. We're not told where we're going. We can get there ourselves, sort of thing. And then it's just like lol, no apocalypse. It's like oh. Well, I, I like the fact that like T two leaves it on an open note because there's no like confirmation that they've stopped Judgment Day. It's more just like, well, we we think we have, um, and we believe that our future is ours to make, but maybe it's not, uh, and maybe maybe ultimately like this is something that's going to happen no matter what we do. I don't know. Like, there's there's kind of a there's definitely a discussion to be had on that. I think, um, but yeah, like I didn't hate. T three. I just felt well, like, like it was it was kind of a flawed movie. T three is just the first of all of them doing this because like even Dark Fate was like, yes, you did it. You beat uh, Skynet. It's all over, done and dusted. However, there also happens to be this horrible AI called Legion that's also yeah. looked exactly the same. <laughs> it's doing all the same things. You're gonna have that, to stop them. That legit made me laugh out loud in the cinema when that moment came. And it's like, what's Skynet? We, we've got Legion now. And it's like, so what's Legion? Uh, it's like an advanced AI that turns against humanity and triggers a nuclear war. All right, so it's yep. fucking Skynet. Skynet. <laughs> what the fuck was the point in any of that? It's no, they're Skynet. different because they're like Terminators that can split in two. They have a gooey Terminator and a hard Terminator. <laughs> nah, I hope okay. that's their, te their technical name. It's like the gooey Terminator and the, the, the skeleton Terminator. <laughs> That seems to be the only thing that's interesting now. It's just like, what will they do next time? Because like, I think that's T2's fault. It was like, look at this cool new Terminator. And so every film now feels the need that we've got to reinvent the Terminator every time. Yeah, Same but, every time, the but every time it's like a regression. You know, T2 yeah. was perfect. It's like it can mimic anything. It can reform itself into any shape or whatever. T3 was like, oh, yeah, so it can do that. But it's got like a skeleton underneath with like weapons and things in it, which never get used. Oh, uh, great. I'm so glad I never watched this film. Yeah, they did the same, by the I way, for um, Jurassic Park, Alien, and Predator. They keep reinventing the old shit because they think audiences won't care about the classic visions. Like I don't know, you guys, did you guys see Alien Covenant? Yeah, oh, is that the first one? <laughs> no, that's no, the, the second one. Yes, yeah, the second no, one. No, I, I, no, I hate, I hate. Oh, Prometheus is the first one, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They uh, have those little like no. super fat. What were they called? spine breakers or whatever and they break out of your back instead yeah. of chest bursters or something and it was like what and it's like yeah because fuck it it's new and they like pale and they have like they're all they're like aliens but they're not alien then jurassic park was like oh it's the indominus rex it's the t-rex but it's much cooler trust us and then yeah. predator was like look at this predator it has armored skin that fucking pissed me off so much predator is so fucking cool because a bullet can kill it Yes, so, yeah. yes. I talked about this in my review. It's like it, it, it's it's not an invincible enemy that's just going to kill everyone. There's tension there because there is a way to kill it. It's just extremely difficult because it's camouflaged. You know yeah. that's what made the original movie so fucking cool. Mm. You know you get to see the predator like operating on itself because it can be injured. The 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 most recent predator movie was ridiculous. It was like the the end boss of a video game where you've just got to keep yeah. cheesing it. 
Oh. With small arms firing slowly wear it down. It's like, what the fuck is even going on here? But but Drinker it it was made by it. a fan of the original. It's like a love letter to the fan. Yes, yeah, it's a love letter to the fan. <laughs> it's just like the last Jedi it was a love letter to fucking Ryan oh. Johnson. <laughs> It's just like He Man, Revelation was a love, love letter, letter to the fans. Ah, uh, are you excited about part two of this series? Because it's going to come out. And I'm calling it now, right? And it's Anne Boleyn. It's, Anne Boleyn. it's Evelyn's story. <laughs> Princess Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn. <laughs> She's going to be black. No. So, Prince Adam is injured, right? At the end of this last one, he's been mm-hmm. shoved, sword shoved through his fucking chest or whatever. Right, so he's going to be out of action the whole season. Teal is going to have to take up the Sword of Power, and she's eventually going to defeat Skeletor, and then at the end, Adam's going to be like, nah, you know what? You're better at this whole He-Man thing than I am. I'm going to give it to you. You're going to be She-Man, and you're going to carry on my legacy, and she'll take up the mantle then. I fucking call on it now. Well, Teal is going to take up the mantle of the Sorceress, because the Sorceress is a mum. So she's going to take up the mantle of that. Nah. But she's Evil going to pass Evil the is going to do that. I'm going to point at you, ass. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you guys stop fighting. Okay? Fuck Dude, you. I'm, stop it. Uh, and then uh, she's going to give the sword of power to her girlfriend. Yeah. And her girlfriend's well, going to become Black Woman, they, them, ma'am. Nah. The, the they, king them, of- ma'am. Sorry. The king is going to die of, of shame or boredom, boredom or something. <laughs> yeah, boredom. And then, like, yeah, diverse female accomplice woman is going to take over as king, queen. No, whatever. Adam um, Adam will become king. So it's like, I'm going to nah, become king, so I can't, I can't He-Man anymore. He, so here, nah. black diverse woman of color, you can you can be Teela's champion. No, it looks like you're getting raided by Gary. He's He's on his way. Oh shit, son! <laughs> the master arrives. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not going to let Gary in. Maybe I'm. Oh. Just oh. <laughs> My God! You had your chance an hour ago, Gary. You blew it. You had your chance. You blew it. You blew it. <laughs> oh my God! Drama. Let's start some drama quick. Yeah, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall out with Gary. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna cry on a video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking ruin my it, two, my two know. dads, my two dads is arguing. Yeah, fuck, yeah. fuck this. I'm gonna go collect some boulders. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Gary comes in. My phone's running out of charge. Bye. <laughs> yeah, my my wife's <laughs> kid needs my wife's kid needs boulders. <laughs> that? I was just chilling with my baby, picking up boulders. You know, you gotta feel bad for him. Buying, bu- buying boulders for a guy on the street, <laughs> dude. If what if he's a Boulder aficionado, and he has like a whole setup, and he carves boulders into like wonderful statues, and he's like, "They'll never believe me. They'll yeah, just like, never yeah. believe me." You're into his house, and it's this incredible rock garden that he's created. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh shit, I had you wrong this whole time. Yeah. I tried to tell them, but they just didn't listen. Or maybe he t- he took up lessons in sculpting to try and prove retroactively that he's like, no, definitely into yeah, definitely into boulders, one hundred percent. Did he take a picture of like? Two rocks on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, look, these are the, these are the boulders are my. It's, it's weird because it had a Getty Images watermark on it. <laughs> <laughs> How did that get there? I, yeah, it's, fuck, I don't know. I had a copyright and everything there. I don't know. It's weird. You almost want to go to alternate dimensions to see what else he said. He's like, oh, I, I went elephant hunting. I just, everyone does that <laughs> typically on their afternoons, yeah. Yeah, just like take it to an extreme level. It's like I had to like save a peace conference and foil a terrorist plot. <laughs> I would be evacuating people from Afghanistan. <laughs> well, I would believe I that more than Boulder collecting. That's how that's how far fetched it is. I, I would believe him more if he said he was Black Panther. I think he'd make a fantastic Black Panther. Well, uh, that's going to be difficult because it looks like a lesbian art teacher. Yeah, it's like you can not? imagine him stood next to the, the the suit for Black Panther, and it's like that suit is literal perfection. It will be <laughs> when it fits an obese man. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, shit. Tell you what, right? While we wait for Gary to arrive, because I'm I'm braying with excitement here. Why don't, why don't I go through a couple of super chats just to just to catch up on them? Because they they might be for you guys. Sweet. Uh 
where the fuck is this? Boobs. Boobs. Taylor Ramirez says, interested in the Wheel of Time series on Prime? Nope. Um, Michael Hing says, Patriot Games extra <laughs> shot sometime. Uh, yeah, I would definitely do that. Um, I generally prefer Alec Baldwin to Harrison Ford because I think Harrison Ford was a bit old for playing Jack Ryan. But yeah, Patriot Games is a good movie. Um, Charles Jones gave me two pounds. Thanks, man. Uh, James Urquhart, a toast to the drinker. Thank you, sir. I'll drink a toast to you. Cheers. <laughs> uh, Mr. Riley says, waistcoat, love it. Some snooker later. <laughs> Hope you're well, mate. I do have a pool table in my house, so I'll go with that. Uh, oh, Marty Gray. Nice. Yeah, nice. Uh, have you watched the HBO series uh, Rome? With uh, world building, grimy and gritty ancient Rome is phenomenal. First season is great. Check it out eventually. So I've watched the occasional episode of that, but I never got into it fully. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have watched Rome on HBO. No. Um, I think I only ever saw one episode, not because I didn't like it, I just didn't catch it. Um, but here it's good. Yeah, it, it, had, it, had, it had that feel of like Spartacus, you know, the same kind of uh, gritty, violent, you know, stuff. But yeah, mm. I quite liked it. Wasn't um, Cavill in Rome? Oh, What's he good other question. Uh, I think it might have been actually, now that you mention it. Um, What's the next one? The horrible story of a man that... Uh, I can't bring up the rest of it. What do you think about the Stargate franchise? I like it. Stargate <laughs> was good back in the day. Um, I don't know if you guys watched it. Yeah, I used to enjoy it. It, wasn't, it, it. wasn't a Star Trek for me, but it was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely... It was good. Um, it definitely like ran its course. And by the end, I was like, yeah, I'm ready for this to finish now. But um, yeah, I think they did pretty much everything they could do with it. And man, to take like a, a, a fucking, you know, fairly bog standard sci-fi movie from the mid 90s and turn it into this incredible franchise, that's pretty, pretty good going. Like, well, I mean, uh, it's endless possibilities. You've got a portal that could lead you to any world. So you've got uh, essentially uh, artistic license to really go for it. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they really make good use of that. So I'll give them give them props for that. Like, um, GJJ says, uh, I got HBO Max for the many saints of Newark. Is it worth keeping the app? I don't know, because I don't get HBO Max over here. Like, and you know, neither does Zaz or Mahler, I guess. Well. Yar, matey. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, there's things like... You know, a, a series of mirrors that it, leads to someone's <laughs> house that does have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I watch it. Yeah. Uh, Chronique 86 here says, uh, Wasted Opportunity is Netflix's nom de plume. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, nom de plume. They get, they get so many opportunities. Uh, DB says, If you and the Friday Night crew, um, including previous guests, were in a Royal Rumble match, who would be first out and who would win? P.S. Have you seen the, first, uh, the film Stealth? I don't know who would be first out if we did like a an FNT Royal Rumble. Uh, Odin. Is he too Cause, nice? Because no, because he's always the first one out. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I I can see you stay until the end, as I don't think I can shift you. <laughs> yeah, so. I just yeah, come on then. <laughs> It's like I've got to try and lift you over the top rope. You like that, those big, big show when they're all just trying to lift the guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even trying, guys. Uh, have I seen Stealth? Yeah, um, I mostly watched it for Jessica Biel because fuck me, she was ripped back then. Ooh. Damn. Yeah, she's I an remember actress. Jessica Biel. Yeah, what happened to her? Where's she I now? Don't no, she's an actress. Like honestly, she should have done great things. She could have been the next big action star. You know, she she could act to a reasonable standard. She was beautiful. She was properly muscly. You know, she get married and have a baby, and then I don't know. Maybe she just really enjoyed. Maybe she mum life sort of mellowed her a bit. I don't know. Nobody enjoys oh, being a parent. Yeah, no, Jessica, Jesus. no, I'm thinking of Jessica. Oh, she got married to Justin Charles the Snake, and then. Oh yeah, Jessica heard, Alba, since, one, since yeah. they got married, I don't. I've never really heard anything from her. Yeah, she was she was ripped. Yeah, she was. Like, if you look at Blade, uh, sorry, Blade Trinity, um, yeah, she had some serious muscle on the go with that one. Like, she she made that movie watchable for me. Uh, but yeah, like, she just didn't do many things after that. She she did um, the A Team. She was like the F, the CIA agent that was 
tasked with hunting them or something. Uh, she did stealth and then fucking haven't seen her in anything since then. Damn. <laughs> I've uh, seen people... I've seen Justin Timberlake in her. Yeah. Uh, hey! uh, apparently she's, she's still still is hot. So yeah. I'll uh, I'll give Water her that. Beach. Who yeah. said that? Uh what's the next one? Uh Claudio Rugajan says, random, but a couple of streams ago you mentioned Daniel Craig hated being James Bond. He hated it after Skyfall because he said he wants to be known for other roles as well, which is understandable. Well, great. Now he can be that fucking douchebag from Knife's <laughs> Out. Hey. I say, I say. Hey, but what, loads I, of people I, liked Knives Out. How could you? I find it so disingenuous, though, when you take on an iconic role like Bond, and then you do like two films or three films, just like, I want to be known for something else other than just James Bond. You know how high profile that role is. Yeah. You know what comes with that. Especially when his whole thing Come was on. reinventing Bond. It was like he was trying to bring Bond to the modern era, but also I don't want to be known for Bond. You're like, okay. Yeah. And, you know, look at look at like David Tennant with Doctor Who. It's just like everything about how he handles the publicity of that role and moving on, just glorious. A perfect template. Yeah. And um, I don't know, man. Like there, there's something about watching a Bond movie with the main actor and knowing that he's like he wants to get out of there. You're like, uh. Eh. You know, it puts a damper on the on the experience. I would say you want you yeah. want your actors to like love the role, especially something like James Bond or you know, you Sherlock do. Holmes. Or yeah, I mean, I, and I'll give the previous <laughs> actors their due. You know, Connery, Moore, uh, Brosnan, like they all embraced the role um, and they all appreciated it and the opportunities <clears throat> that it gave them. Um, yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's like Daniel Craig somehow resents it, like he was forced into it or something. It's like nobody fucking made you do this. Man. <sighs> do you know? I mean, <laughs> did you see the latest trailer? Uh, no, people have been saying it makes it look better, but I haven't seen it because well, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't know about it makes it looks better. Better. I mean, they face it. There's about two seconds of Lashana Lynch in it, and that's it. But it's like the you know the part where he's in the DB5 and it's spinning around shooting everyone. Yeah. Well, they they show the bit before then, and the car gets like trapped, and they're all like all these guys around it, and they're just like shooting into the car, and because it's bulletproof, and the woman in it is like saying, "Please, please," and he's just like, (laughs) "I can't be bothered." (laughs) No, yeah, but it's like that's just like okay, as if he was just like waiting to be, you know, he didn't just he wouldn't care if they just shot them all to pieces. When was yeah. when was this film shot? Did any of you know? Uh, about two about and a half years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so weird, isn't it? Uh, it's like it's at the point now where I actually resent it, just because it's taken so long to come out. It's like you, you're going to have to be something fucking spectacular to win me over at this point, because you've been teasing this for so long, and I just don't care anymore. Uh, I just love this one as well. Roger Moore was my Bond, or is my Bond? Uh, he's, he's my Bond. Yeah, he, he's the one I grew up with. He's the one that was always on TV. Like fucking Conry's Bond was never on. Just keep it the British end up. On. It was it was weird for me. My dad made sure Bruce. I watched a lot of uh, Connery Bond, but then I'd see Brosnan Bond on um, TV and and his movies and stuff. Uh, can I just say, Goldeneye is a fucking amazing Bond film. I do. my favorites were Goldeneye and Goldfinger for a long time. Oh, you were a man of expensive taste, aren't you? you? Yeah, jump in between years like that. And I, of course, uh, Die Another Day, the classic, everyone's favorite. Uh, yeah. Is that the one where uh, where Bond does like a bit of like surfing? Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah. Horrible yeah. That, that was yeah. literally because Triple X had come out like the year before and everyone yeah. was like, ah, oh, the extreme sports, everyone's into that now. We need to have Bond do that. Like, no, no, don't do that to Bond. <laughs> and you could tell Brosnan didn't know what the fuck's going on. It's like, ah, I'm on a green screen. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like that fucking bit from Escape from LA when, when Snake <laughs> Plissken is just surfing the tsunami. <laughs> tsunami, man! No! I cannot be unseen. <laughs> uh, I love Connery, though. I love Connery Bond films. They are just yeah. the best, man. Well, I was, I was talking... Like, when I did my... Um, my review of Hunt for Red October, right? Connery's obviously the the, the sure. main um, 
I don't know. He, he's like the focus of the movie, essentially. Um, and I just miss actors like him. Just like the only way I could describe it is just pure fucking masculinity distilled into a person. And you yeah. just don't get it anymore. There's not a single actor now in Hollywood that I could put on the same pedestal as Connery. James Corden. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, I stand corrected, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> gyrating in, in to some poor I, people I, parked in a car somewhere I in Hollywood. I shit you not, I would have run them over if I was that guy. Just stand on the gas and just hope for the best. If he thrusted <laughs> his crotch at me, I'd fucking punch him in his dick. It's like, what are you doing, you absolute fucking bellend? Is it he could be any more unlikable already? Yeah, yeah. He got yeah. so lucky in terms of who he could have bumped into that day and what they could have done. Yeah. Also, some yeah. people are referencing Caleb, and you know, especially in Dread, he's a good. Yeah, one. but he's he's, he's but definitely he's no on the right track. He's not a Connery, though. He doesn't. He's not gotten to that level. And I just think, I just think actors nowadays are not allowed to be like that. It's like too threatening. It's too. It's too over the top for most people to handle. Um, and they 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 just don't want to allow it. Uh, and so what you get now is these fucking children who are inhabiting male bodies. Um, and it, it's just, it's pathetic when you have to witness it. You know, Cl yeah, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But then he's like 200 years old didn't, now. So. Didn't he retire like recently? No, he's just made another film. I could have sworn he announced a retirement thing. Someone told me anyway. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. I'll, I'll have a look. He's, he's well into his 90s now, isn't he? He's a fucking uh, legend. 92, 93, I think. He's absolutely a legend. Love, uh, yeah, love. Uh, oh, no, Clint Eastwood. Eastwood said on why he won't be retiring. Oh. Anytime soon. Oh, good. <laughs> Go ahead, mate. Make more shit. Go for it. I know yeah. that. Yeah, I know that he's got he's got a movie coming out soon. And I mean, no disrespect, because the guy is ninety something, and he's literally like, oh, yeah, in this movie. Well, I mean, he moved it. He moved it more into directing, and he is, to be fair, an excellent director. Like the the movies that he produced in his later career, are excellent. I just don't think he needs to be in front of the screen anymore. Um, Henry Cavill is the next Bond. Yes, absolutely, I mean, dude. Like, please. Uh, oh, you saw him drink. You've seen Fallout, right, Mister Possible Fallout? Yes. Like yeah. without without saying too much, because I do want to watch that with Ads at that point. <laughs> um, ah! Let's just can say. I just, can I just share something? There's enough evidence in that film that Henry Cavill could probably pull off Bond. Yeah, yeah. He that was that almost felt like a trial run. There was like a demo reel for him being Bond. Yeah, he, he's got the look. He's got the physique. Um, he, he's kind of got that masculinity that you would look for in Bond. It's it's still you know it's under control these days because it has to be. But like it's definitely there with Cavill, and I think he could play an excellent fucking Bond. And he's young enough that he could do like three, four movies easily. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Movie. So uh, yeah, uh, oh, we've got what the fuck's this? Couldn't resist it. Jealousy is a stinky cologne, Matt. I know, I know. It reeks. Uh, it is reeking from the. Oh, look, we're normal now. Oh yeah. Yay! yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, at last I can actually move the chair in. So yeah. <laughs> it's because you you know the row of things at the bottom, you can change the position of the Wow drinker, <laughs> idiot. Look at the bottles behind drinker <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> you need that to is this. drinker. That, that, that is be... drinker right there. <laughs> Dude, that needs I... to be a set. Just add more and more to it as time goes on. Yeah, it's just fucking mounting <laughs> the bottles behind me and can't. <laughs> I had to prep for this stream, man. I had to get fired up, you know. Oh man, I bet the, the audience is just like, oh thank I God, thank God has his face is gone. <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> gentlemen, just before we go on to the next little bit though, I I need desperately need to go for a piss because I've been drinking like for the past hour or so. Could you excuse me for like sixty seconds or so? Absolutely. Could Again, you, you have you, our permission. I love it. Could you talk amongst yourselves just briefly? <laughs> just Very talk well. amongst yourselves, gentlemen. Yeah, interact oh. with chat like they're desperate for your attention. Just talk to them, man. <laughs> Chat's always 
desperate for chat, attention. Yeah. Stop it. Sit chat, down. Chat, we love you. We love you, chat. So, yeah, I'll be back. I'll just be back shortly. Bear with me. I'll be back. Oh, hey, what Molly, you about? see those two there? You oh, see yeah. the, those two guys there? The gorgeous lads, yeah. The other one came. Oh, my God. You're going to make an army. And the other one came. You know, if we fast forward like 100 years into the future, they might start making hot toys that can actually like, you know, move around themselves as in like they fly, like Iron Man flies around your room and talks to you and stuff. That's what we Well, need. I mean, we were saying recently, how how soon until they get like breed, like chest like contracts and expands as to, to, to simulate breathing. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Hi chat. How you doing? Yeah, chat. What's up? What's what's on your minds, chat? What are you concerned about these days? I'm worried about the wasp statue falling over at the back. She's, she's gonna get a new home soon. Don't worry. Yeah, why you why you got wasp next to Iron Man? You know that that he deserves to be higher up. Come on. Well, he no, because his base is too big. If I put him there, he would definitely fall over. Oh. She's she's a lithe little lady. I didn't know you liked wasp so much. Why do you like wasp so much? What's so cool about wasp? I, I just think it's a cool looking character. I mean, I wasn't a massive fan of the film, but I just think it's a really cool looking character. That's fair enough. I can't remember <laughs> the film, so I wouldn't tell you if I'm a fan or not. Oh, the film's great. There was this... Yeah. Yeah. Michael Douglas was in it. Mike, yeah, 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 yeah. He's um he's around. He's still he's still trucking. And uh, uh, that's better. That was a good wank. Sorry, piss. piss. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the drink comes back and it's suddenly yellow. Wait a yeah. minute. <laughs> what have I done? Ah. Well, now here we have got a question, right? We've got Gary here. He's he's waiting backstage. Do we bring Ooh. him in or do we do we allow this? Oh, oh, my, oh my I guess God. we could we could do a vote, I guess. Yeah. Chat, what do you think? Press Y if we should bring Gary in uh, or press <laughs> N if you, if the answer is nay. I was like the idea they're all saying why. Like, Everyone's going why, y bring and then you, you see not Matt Mundane and it goes N. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of Y's in there. All right. There's a lot of Y's. <laughs> Don't pull it, Tell me wise. Tell me sweet little wise. All right, the wise tell have it. Let's let's bring it. Tell me, tell me wise. Look, Gary. Hello. Ah. There he is. Oh shit! You're here, I, son. I voted no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too come. bad. You've been outvoted. I think the yeah. night off. How's oh, it going, no. man? Good. Good. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, I had some stuff to do, but uh, hopefully uh, some people came over. And there was a yeah. raid. Uh, no, it's all right, man. I like to masturbate quite a bit as well, so it's good. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I understand yeah. when you're delayed. <laughs> I was doing that during the stream, nobody noticed. I'm yeah. <laughs> so like, whenever I go on to, to icon only, that's someone you know. Mm -hmm. mm, right yeah. When, when I do this, just saying. Oh, oh it's done. It's already done. Yeah. That's why Maul is always an icon, just constant. Yeah, it's, it's a little, there's a tube attached. Oh, takes the edge off, doesn't it? So, yeah, it's good to keep you chilled. It Ooh. keeps you objective. Yeah. <laughs> it's constant post nut clarity. The, mm. the, the <laughs> true path to objectivity. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> as, as, since we're all men here, there's nothing better than post nut clarity. It's, yeah. it's like, there's, it's like a zen, like, you know, your woman's horned you up and you'll do anything for it, and then you bust your nut and they just like make me a fucking sandwich, bitch. Yeah. Then you the, get the, you the get clarity like a whole is different in. view of life, don't you? Yeah. Well yeah, if you have a hard decision to make, have a wank. And you'll you'll, you you'll wanna, come yeah. up with it yeah. straight away. Yeah. <laughs> so what a friend of mine said, he said, Look, if you if you're getting if a woman is teasing you rattling you up all the time, just go upstairs, have a wank. You'll come well, back I, with a completely like, different perspective. Well, the thing for me as well, like, say I'm in the movie theater and I'm watching a movie, I don't quite understand Probably don't if I like it or not. Like, I'll just <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, now I know, now I know. I've got objectivity yeah. on my side. So, <laughs> that's fine. Wow. It's like when I went to watch Species at the cinema, that was an awkward experience. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Gary, incredibly random question that I will explain the context of. I'm just curious if you'll get it. What was Wolverine's name when he was a horseman of the apocalypse? When he was a horseman of the apocalypse, I can't remember. 
Oh, it's, nah. it's true. It's trivia in my little Marvel game. And I was like, it's, Gary will know. No, I won't. Uh, Cause well, I wasn't the, the biggest X-Men fan in the nineties. Uh, all right. Well, your four options are war, execution, a death and scourge. Oh, this is I'm getting a mixed picture in chat as well. Like, yeah, we've got a couple of places places in chat. Yeah. A lot of death and war. War seems to be the prevailing one. I can't. I'm going to have to look it up. (laughs) Barbecue special. (laughs) That's the horseman name. Barbecue special. Just while you're while you're investigating, right? There's there's someone asking, they're like, what we think about the Rocketeer reboot. Oh, uh, so excited! I'm sh- I, I can't wait to see yeah. like your race swap for no fucking reason whatsoever. Uh, notable aliases are pestilence, hellhound, hound, <clears throat> death, death. Huh? All right, we'll go with that. That's correct. It was de- wow. All of chat was saying war. You're all terrible Marvel yeah. fans. Look well, at there you. was there, there <laughs> a few death ones. Hang on a second. Maybe the Wikipedia's got it right. Okay, well, because I, I just put in Wolverine horseman name. Uh, should I, should hey say, trucker <laughs> rob you take care dude have a nice sleep you've been he's been a lovely person today yeah he was death yeah he was death nailed it death. nailed it yeah. rocketeer uh, yeah it looks like you, you you should be excited drinker i don't know i i just you know i really like the original movie it's got such charm it just it's a movie that makes me feel happy <laughs> I, I just enough of that it's wrong yeah, <laughs> What's that? A movie you enjoyed that made you feel happy? Well, we'll soon yeah. deal with that, sir. Yeah, that, we have to make you experience racism in the 1940s. Uh, former Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, while you know Billy Campbell's still alive, right? Last time I checked, he is. Yes, yes. Yeah, um, well, he'll play the role. Probably looks pretty good for his age. Let me see. I, I mean, Jennifer too- Connelly, like, fuck me. She this was, guy could be doing it for, for all the right reasons and everything, but I, I am just too cynical with all everything that's been done this day and age that I just can't take things like this seriously no more. It's, no. It's, it's like there's an I just don't want him to touch anything anymore. Just don't touch yeah. any of it. Yeah, just leave, leave. I'd rather you just didn't touch than ruin. Yeah. Well, it's just, please. you know, like the one of the, the Rocketeer is one of those films that's like genuinely like I've grown to like it more as time has passed. And when I look at it now, it's got real like good old fashioned Disney charm to it. It really feels like a nice movie that you can watch with your family. Um, and I just know that when they, when they get their hands on it now, they're just going to absolutely bastardize it into a political tool. And it's such a shame because it shouldn't be that. No, it, it should be a fun fan. Well, that's what Disney made it. If they want to make it like uh, the the comic, it would be a lot sexier. Uh, we'll say that because uh, <laughs> Jennifer Connelly, who is hot as the day is long, still, uh, you know, right here. <sighs> I was showing it yesterday. As control yourself. Sorry, I just uh, thought Jennifer. Wait, I, wait, Jen, wait. Just a Jennifer it's, Connolly. And... When, when, when someone, uh, yeah, when someone mentioned Jennifer Connolly, excuse me, gentlemen. Everyone just suddenly goes like this. Oh, Sorry, shit. Gary, did you say I got Jennifer oh, Connolly? <laughs> Jennifer Connolly, Betty Page. It's Betty Page, right? Uh, who is. Uh, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> uh, that's what <laughs> in the combo. Lots of drinks on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Colley was in the uh, Ang Lee Hulk, right? Or, or, yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And she does the yeah. She has, I think we mentioned it. She does the voice of the uh, Iron Spider costume. Oh yeah. Uh, Which is funny because she's married to Paul Bethany, isn't she? She's married to Paul Bethany. Yeah. I didn't know that. And but, he, and he yeah. did the. Uh, hey, uh, there he is, striking a Hulk Hogan pose. Yeah. Here, let, let's get your. It shows power. I almost got as a stream in trouble yesterday, so we can we can do the same thing here. I just got to find the right picture. Dude, I titties. They, look, they're fine. Ah, yeah, hey, family. family we get that in the Rocketeer, huh? Yeah, family fun. Dave Stevens. <laughs> There's a reason this comic was very popular, and it wasn't the Rocketeer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, 
they already didn't they remake uh the rocketeer an animated version with the little black girl as well or they were going to do that i don't know if they actually did it uh probably i remember no, mixing it up with iron man <laughs> no they're doing that too <laughs> doing it as well doing that too no, they well, just, uh, it's re- its a parody at this point. That's why every time they make one of these announcements, I am just going to post up that white Black Panther picture every single time. That's no, no, I- Gary, you can't do that because Matt Jarbo is going to have a go at you. <laughs> so, he, 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 oh, he no. called you out, Gary. <laughs> the big job is coming for you. <laughs> the Boulder Boy is coming. Uh, I'm an MP and uh, a poser. Okay. Yeah. Not we, nearly as opposed to somebody running like a scolded dog from Jeremy. We we genuinely need a Perry Chan to like um do like a, a video of like Gary running away like Indiana Jones from the boulder and it's just Matt Jarbo's face <laughs> on it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he tried to do that at Comic Con. He's like, Oh, I'd really love to talk to Gary and Jeremy, but they just seem to run. Every time I'm around and like I po- I tweeted right under his the address we put for our meetup and directions. <laughs> like, yeah, all this running we're doing, you could have found us right here, like everybody else did. And, uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. sick. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's going down an interesting path nowadays, his Jarbo. Well, he goes down many interesting pathways, he's an Uber Eats driver. That's 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 very true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Gary, we we were just talking earlier. Um, and sorry if we're covering the same ground with chat, but we've got different people coming in. Uh, yeah. But we were talking about Marvel's What If, and I was of the opinion that it's kind of a, a mixed bag. And I quite liked uh, Captain Carter, and I quite liked the Doctor Strange episode. Um, and I think it's it's got a it's got elements of good storytelling in it um, and elements of shittiness in it as well. I just wonder what you thought of it. Um, I haven't watched the Doctor Strange episode. Uh, the only one I liked was um, the the last, the one before that until the end when it's what if everybody died except for Captain Marvel, basically. <laughs> yeah. uh, that ending fucking killed it for me, but I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't like the animation, and uh, I really hated the Captain Carter one. That's the first one they picked. Uh, and <laughs> he's like fucking tossing around, you know, cars with one hand. And it's just, yeah, what if a woman was Captain America? Of course, it'd be better. Now, they could have done that. And I guess in isolation, it wouldn't have been a problem. But this is Marvel. That was their first choice. That was the first fucking episode they showed after all of this MCU crap right on the heels of Loki, right on the heels of fucking Black Widow, and I'm just sick to death of it. I'm just tired of it. And I, I fully believe we're going to see some MCU in the uh, male lead Shang-Chi movie tonight, too. As a matter of fact, a couple of Super Chatters kind of alluded that that's, that's the case. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. I'm going to see it in a couple no, of I, hours. It's going to be like another week before I go see it. Um, yeah, we're going to be <laughs> going to see it for my mate's birthday, which is going to be a fucking horrible birthday present for him. But yeah. <laughs> but, it is right good Gary, you, make it sound you, like, hate you. you make it sound like you're not excited for marvel's katie it's like that's the whole fucking draw that's the whole reason everyone's going i can't wait to see her defeat galactus but it'll be <laughs> after galactus sits at a desk and tells us what he does they won't show us they won't show us you know him devouring planets he'll just talk about it yeah he'll cry yeah. and he'll say i was bad i made a mistake this sucks yep mayor I, cooper I, mayor cooper mayor cooper, mayor Max, mayor cooper. i think what if could be good uh and they could have a lot of fun with it if they remember what fun is um now that i heard the doctor strange episodes kind of dark and uh so i've heard a couple people say they liked it so I'll i i liked it I, I i'll be honest like i thought it was pretty good storytelling and yeah it's definitely got a dark ending um yeah the, <clears throat> the setup of, of it is a little bit confusing because i don't quite understand how it ties in with the movie but if you if you can move past that um, the general idea of like where it takes Doctor Strange as a character, yeah, it's pretty good, um, and yeah, it's definitely got a, a, a dark ending. And it doesn't try to ape the movie; it doesn't try to follow all the storylines of that. It tells its own story, so I thought it was okay. That's cool. It's finally they finally do something with Doctor Strange. That'll be that'll be nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I you know th- this is something I really picked up on when I was watching the Spider Man trailer. 
Um, why the fuck is Doctor Strange so irresponsible now? Um, a lot of people have tried to defend him by saying, well, in his movie, he's told not to fuck with time at all, and look, he fucks with it straight away. And it's like, it's a particular kind of irresponsibility he has in terms of he believes, well, he wants to know about everything, and he wants to be able to make the choices about how everything should go. It's like, he wants power, he wants understanding. The idea that you he would happily erase everyone's memories of Spider-Man is like, I think that's a bit different. I don't believe he would do that. Yeah, the, there's there's got to be some kind of moral implication to doing that. You can't just like rewrite the memories of every person on the planet. And like, what are you going to do? Are you going to erase all the hard drives that contain all this information about Peter Parker? Are you going to yeah undo the news reports that have already been made? Like, you you can't just make a blanket change like that and and have it be like just this this simple clean cut thing. And you've got the um. You know the angle of like, oh, it could be Mephisto. It's like, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> even if it is at this point, screw, no. And I think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be an irresponsible Peter Parker and an irresponsible Doctor Strange, uh, which just kills the character some more. He's supposed to be the Sorcerer Supreme now, but he's not because Wanda's out there. Would you remember, um, Infinity War? He says he will let Peter and Iron Man die to save the stone mm-hmm. and he's like 100 percent on that i did where's that guy <laughs> yeah this is a this yeah that's a guy who understood the bigger picture that's a guy who who examined like a million different possibilities and a million different outcomes and determined that stone tony stark had to die in order to preserve this this timeline um that's that's a guy who had reached a point of understanding with with what he was doing uh, and that guy seems to have vanished for this movie because it's convenient, and that just seems weird. It, it's weird because of the decisions they're making prior to writing, right? So uh, you guys are looking at it from a creative, as you should, because uh, that's what we get. we're going to see, a creative piece here, a work of art. But this work of art is being edited before they even start now. So uh, the, the article came out in Bounding yesterday that uh, Disney's going to do that CRT training. And there is a, there's a, a paper that has been going around that's been done, done by a think tank. Uh, I finally, thanks to the Lady Grave Master, got my hands on it again. And it's the do's and don'ts of writing, basically, in the modern age. And if we're going to have a white character doing something, and, like, listen, this is their rules. I hate saying this shit. I hate even talking about it, okay? Uh, but it's... It's what they're doing is they, they have to show the white character be the irresponsible one. They're the only ones who can be dumb and irresponsible and irrational and racist or whatever. Um, and there's certain characters that you just can't write with any complexity anymore. And that's why we get so many soulful saints. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just starting to write women as duplicitous if they're a villain. But it's usually a guy's fault. Um, and I... I I, I long for a day where none of this is considered before somebody writes something. They just go into a story yeah. to write a story. Um, yeah. We actually had a, we were doing a catch up last night for EFAB, and um, someone said, like, what if we got to a point where there are no more roles that they, they hire white men for? And Rags was like, what do you mean? They always need villains. <laughs> yeah. <Hi-yo. laughs> no, I, I've, I've picked up on this myself. Like, I, I've already said in, in other videos that I've made, like, there's rules to how you can write stories nowadays. And, you know, um, for example, a white man or a man can never beat a woman in any kind of competition, whether it's intellectual, physical, whatever. She always has to come out on top. Um, you know, uh, people of certain minorities or, or ethnic backgrounds can never be portrayed in a negative light. People of, of whatever sexual orientation can never be portrayed in a negative light. These are all things that now exist within storytelling. Um, and they absolutely constrain how you can tell a story because we have to pander to whatever political thing is 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 um, popular at the moment, and it's such a shit thing because it it's like trying to it's like trying to win a, a a boxing match with with one hand tied behind your back. You know, it constrains a storyteller's ability to tell a good story because now they're they're obeying all these different rules while trying to tell an original story at the same time. And no wonder so many movies end up shit nowadays because they're they're tied and they're they're hamstrung by this nonsense. If you're yeah, independents um, aren't though the independents they can do what they want. Is this is studio 
uh, studio regulations. So somebody gets some backing, somebody gets a bit of coin. Hey, we're going to give you 10, 15, 20 million to make a movie. We, we like your idea. We like your premise. And they can just go ahead and create some, some, something, create art. Then they, they're not going to be restrained or constrained by these um, stupid, which, by the way, these uh, systems are racist, bigoted, sexist, misogynist, misogynist, all of this, all of those words. This is exactly what those things are. You don't think you don't think uh, black people can be wankers or brown people can be twats or gay people can be fucking assholes. Just gone to Twitter. Just gone to Twitter <laughs> for five fucking minutes. You'll find them in abundance. Everyone. So so to say that certain characters, certain demographics, certain races, certain sex uh, or women. Let's just say because there's only two sexes. Uh, women can't be uh, this, that, or the other. It's it's pathetic beyond compare, and that's when you get something pathetic like Black Widow was. Well, uh, I think you, you do these characters, or you do these the, all these different people, such a disservice because you take such complexity away from them. You know, you could write like really interesting, nuanced. Black but they don't care female, about them. Yeah, like whatever whatever um, demographic you want to talk about, you can write like nuanced characters like that that have got good and bad in them, that have got complexity, that got shades of meaning to them. But you're not allowed to now. They have no, to be universally Hollywood, portrayed Hollywood, as good and righteous and everything. And it's just, it's so simplistic. Hollywood doesn't care about black people. Hollywood doesn't care about gay people. Hollywood doesn't care about women. Hollywood is bothered about its optics. Hollywood is bothered about its uh, press. How it's perceived. Uh, that's that's what it's bothered about. But they don't give a shit. They don't give an absolute toss. And yeah, you, you are doing such a disservice because you are you are stunting the growth of characters. Well, yeah, I think, and uh, Cap Captain Marvel is still top tier example for that. By the way, oh. like spends the whole film no, having no idea who she is. She barely struggles at all. The three antagonists she meets, the the all obviously all male, the, the Talos. She breaks out of his ship by herself because she beat the mind control tech just because she, if you guys remember, she just wakes up in it. She's like, ah, I got it. Then you got um, Jude Law. He like tries to fight her on an uh, equal playing field. She just blasts him away. And then you got yeah. Ronan, turns up in his armada and she just blasts it away. It's just like Samuel Jackson in that film. If you remember, he's like really proud of his fingerprint thing, gets through a door, and then she just blows the door open. It's like. It's like Man, it's so fucking interesting. <laughs> you um you you've mentioned this in your uh, Black Widow review where you've got like these char these writers who want to write female characters and it comes down to insecurity. We cannot possibly show our our character being in any kind of peril or or not knowing what to do or having any kind of weakness or anything because we're not confident enough in our own writing ability to get them out of it. And so they have to always be amazing. They always have to be brilliant at everything. They always have to be in control of every situation. Uh, and this is this is what you get. You end up with characters like Captain Marvel, who are just fucking like they can just dominate every situation through their sheer power. Um, and what is there to work with? Where's the drama? Where's the conflict? Where's the the um, the challenge for that character? Nothing can possibly be allowed to challenge them, because that would mean having to exercise a little bit of thought and a little bit of um, like creative endeavor to give your character something to do. And we can't have that. that well, that's did, what did you end she, up um, with. Because I haven't watched Captain Marvel because you can <laughs> fucking fuck As off. you fucking bigot. Uh, How can you yeah, not wow. support well, that I, movie? Yeah, because I'm a bigot. It's a uh, great movie. When she's getting trained for the first time by Jude Law, from what I can remember from Mauler's uh, video, doesn't she beat him in the training? Yep. Yes. So, like, so when, you, when you've beaten your master in the training, yeah, so <laughs> then, then they, where, they, where does the character go? They, they have a fist fight, and then he sort of prevails over her in that, and then she just gets pissed off with him and blasts him with her, her fucking bullshit beams. <laughs> the bullshit. That, that just knocks the him across beams. the room. You need to control your emotions. Yeah, that's yeah, what that was. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. So basically, her, her arc is like, you're too powerful and too awesome, and you need to control that awesomeness. 
you know, oh, they'll go, they'll go for the whole like men. Where does that come from, Gary? Where have we heard that recently? Uh oh, we just heard that from Tila, right? Yes, so Tila, correct. He man, she said, uh, "I'm yeah, I'm afraid of myself because I'm too powerful and awesome." Yeah, that that bit where she goes down to hell and she's she's put up against her ultimate fear, and her ultimate fear man. is her own awesomeness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's Fuck! Mine, I'll be oh. honest. <laughs> Jesus! Every day. I give me like five minutes, and I could write a better fucking um, <laughs> character arc for Tila with your left this hand. Is just ludicrous! Look, they're doing so bad. Drinker almost forgot the word character. We don't even remember yeah, anymore. Like, <laughs> what is this thing that people have what to is- have? A uh, fucking character? <laughs> Yeah, it's just ah, oh, God, I hate it. Like Kevin Smith as well. Fuck you, you fat arsehole. Yep. <laughs> I liked him better when he was fatter. And, and now, uh, I know other people have pointed this out, but have you noticed? Like every time he takes a picture, he's making this weird face, like he's getting pegged. His <laughs> pictures like this, don't they? Like no, but it's it's always as well. Like he, he still wears the the clothes that he wore when he was a fat arsehole, and so like it's always like these big. Tents that are hanging off him. <laughs> it's like we yeah. we get it. You're you're slimmer now. You can buy a new wardrobe. Find something that fits you instead of wearing a fucking like size twenty seven blazer with like oh, I, shorts. I, I know what fits him. Jesus. The net the fucking chairman of Netflix cock right up his ah, fucking ass. Ah. Well, aren't you guys excited for Clerks three? Uh no no. Oh oh. I'm just as excited for Jay and Silent Bob. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they went with that title. <laughs> they should. It's a good title. It's a good title. Um, here, here's you know, here's an interesting one though, right? I don't know if any of you guys ever watched Queen's Gambit. I've heard it's yeah. good. I've heard it's really good. Yeah, it, it is good. And Anya Taylor Joy plays a great character, and she does a great performance. And it's interesting because it's not one of those um, shows where everyone's like, huh, a woman playing chess? What? This is ridiculous. Mm. You know, everyone just accepts her for who she is. Um, and she's she's good at what she does. The problem is that she's also, like, completely messed up in the head. And so it's like a constant battle between addiction um, and, and just her being on the knife edge of being able to perform amazingly. But also um, she could spiral off into madness. And it's a, it's a great um, it's a great TV show, and I'd very much recommend it. They, they portray a female character with genuine flaws and genuine weaknesses there. Um, yeah, and it, it's just it's just a shame we don't get more stuff like that. I really should review that at some point, actually, because it's worth talking about. I'm going to have to watch it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here's one. Serious um, 50-year-old man who wears <laughs> a backwards baseball hat is telling people to grow up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin! All I can say for Kevin Smith is uh, he's he's lucky he's got money. Yeah, he's lucky, yeah. He's lucky he made money. He better hang on to it. Uh, the thing is, yeah, he's he's ridden that. I'm a I'm a nerd just like all of you for so long, and it's been bullshit. It's been bullshit for at least a decade, probably two, because he's been in well, Hollywood yeah, for twenty years now. You can more. tell he's disconnected because of the fact that he said the line like after hearing people complain being like Netflix doesn't care it's like dude you know that that's not what we would want to hear if you remember what it was like to be in the audience grow up like why the fuck would you tell us that it's like thanks or something like it's like these people have never seen or heard a story in their life it's like oh "Oh, dude you did not just say that (laughs) not disconnection you know yep uh, it's amazing how he didn't say a single thing about He Man after that weekend was over. Nope. <laughs> oh, he'll be back, right? He'll be back with part the second half or whatever. Oh, you know, he was saying things about other stuff. He just somehow just suddenly stopped saying things <laughs> about He Man and Netflix. Just pure coincidence, I'm sure. Total coincidence. Gary, I got another one. You ready? Yeah, ready. Can you do this? All right. Daredevil and Electra first met at which school? The School of Hard Knocks. Uh, <laughs> Empire University? Oh, that's one of the four options. I can give you the four options if you want. Give me the four options. Harvard, Empire State University, Columbia University, and Yale. Oh. 
I'm going to stick with Empire, but I'm probably going to be wrong. It's probably going to be like Yale. It uh, was Columbia University. Columbia. Yeah. Nah. Fake okay. geek girl. Fake oh. geek <laughs> Some love for the expanse in chat as well. Great show. But is it still great? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Not unless first three seasons loud. were good. Uh, the first three seasons are very good. The last season was a mess, but they me tooed one of the um they me tooed uh Alex. So Alex Kamal, who uh, is a major character, and yeah. you could tell they fired the guy like that day. They sent him packing because uh, his death scene is like a frame grab that they put like some blood on. And, <laughs> uh, they just say goodbye to him really quick, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is like, it, it would be like if fucking Chewbacca died, uh, and they just didn't say anything. They're like, oh, we're really sad he's gone. You know, in Star Wars, or if uh, fucking, they, they, I really would not put that past Jay. I was going to say they came close to that in Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what it's comparable to is um, Colin Baker's uh, exit in uh, in Doctor Who, right? Yeah. Well, that was uh, yes. He didn't know that he was getting the the boot, and they didn't want to get him back to record the regeneration scene because Michael Gray fucking hated him. So they just I, put a wig on Sylvester McCoy. As far as I knew, they did ask him to come back and he refused. Uh, which is fair because of how they treated him. That's what I was told anyway. It might be one to them. Because he was promised way longer as a run, but they've cut they cut it off. And well, yeah, Michael Gray him. hated him and was told to he was said to get rid of him. I want to get that, gone. that is brutal. Yeah. I'm not even giving the man a proper regeneration scene. Like they're they're <laughs> supposed to have some epic sign well, off, you know. I think it doesn't it open with he's just on the floor and then they they turn him over and he's already regenerated or like half yeah, regenerated. The, the, the TARDIS is getting attacked by um, the Rani and then uh, he gets hit a couple of times and then the next it goes inside and you know you got the old psh, psh, and then the doctor's just on the floor and then when they flip him over it's Sylvester McCoy but they've <sighs> You know, they yeah. just put the light on his face and he's got the blonde wig on and he's just regenerating. He's just regenerating. Yeah. It was a different time. Okay. Yes, yeah. it was... We were more innocent back then. <laughs> I tell you what, though, how much would you give to get Sylvester McCoy back and replace Jodie Whittaker? Oh, all the money in the world he'd right now. It would be great if he came back. Oh, he'd fuck be yeah. fucking great. He was awesome as Radagast. So. Uh, one of the he had the most violent death of any doctor there's been. Just oh, steps and, out oh, in yeah, gets new, shot. <laughs> yep. get fucking mowed down by a bunch of bullets. By an Uzi or whatever, yeah. Um, Jeez. Uh, Some people dude. in chat were wondering, I am playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which, by the way, is responsible for a large amount of why I was invested in Marvel. <clears throat> I, I'm a video game era person. You guys with oh. your comics... I was playing as these characters running around blasting things. Oh, dude, I played that game constantly when you know, but that was like a long time ago. The first oh. one was really good. I like it. It still holds up, game. man. I've been playing it. It's pretty fun. It? Yeah. This is a fun little game. I've got it on Steam. I think I have it on Steam. Oh yeah. If you have it on Steam, you um you're lucky because you can't get it now. They they ran out of the license as far as I know. I don't know if they've re renewed it based Mola. I mean, yeah, everyone should play this game, okay? If you're a Marvel fan, jump right yeah. in. Ultimate yeah. Alliance is, was great. Uh, first one. Do you remember they, they have the send-off folks, you steal a bunch of shit from Galactus to beat Doom in this, and then Galactus <gasps> at the end of the game is like, you fuckers, <laughs> I'm coming to get you. Hey, there's some Mego 8-inch figures on sale at Zavi in the UK. We've got Rocketeer, Gary, we've got Q, we've got Locutus. No, oh, really? I've got the Rocketeer one here, the Miko one. Yeah, I got the Miko one. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. It's uh, hanging out back there. Maybe. I, don't know. I got a one six. I got a. Uh, I got a Rocketeer helmet somewhere. Ah, uh, that, what that, it likes that thing is just a, a yeah. thing of beauty. Like it's a proper Art Deco style, and I love it. Is it cultural the, appropriation? It is. I had the backpack yeah. too, but I sold it. Uh, no, not for crack. Please don't tell me for crack. No, that was to probably to pay a bill. <laughs> okay. For crack. For crack. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah the bill was crack. Bill. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
No, selling my John Byrne fucking uh, original oh, art. Oh, no. Spider Man, Black Cat, Batman, Catwoman having a double date on a rooftop for dope. Yeah, that was. Uh, Damn. That's a bummer. Dude. Don't worry. I lost, I lost all my comic collections gambling, all of it, oh. which included a, a bespoke piece of artwork by John McCray uh, of Batman and Hitman written to me uh, but there you go this is this is why we live and learn may I, may i uh may i do a couple of super chats just while we're going through yeah, yeah yeah I'm yeah yeah bring it i'm gonna catch this up there hopefully oh, by the way I, I i the art is up there it's uh it's on uh oh it's from my read your super chat and then i'll share the piece of art i'll show you what it looks like it's okay uh yeah put it in chat or something and i'll share it uh right so um yeah, Wolf Spain says the old guard should have been the first five minutes of the X Men Origins Wolverine, but an entire movie, another wasted opportunity. Yeah, that was one of my criticisms of the old guard is that we never got any, any real insight into these people fighting throughout history, like seeing them in different periods of time and and, and uh, you know all the the stuff that you could bring into the movie with that. Like none of it was there. It was just them fucking mooching around London. It's so boring. Uh, so yeah, that should have been that should have been what they did. Um, Arsniv says, "Why the fuck are they rebooting uh, Fresh Prince? This is the ultimate fuck you." <laughs> yeah, is that really happening? Are they rebooting Fresh Prince? I've heard that. I have it's heard that. French, Fresh Princess, or it'll be a prince. Probably, with a I don't know. It's going to be <laughs> the fresh, the fresh queen of Bella. Wait, we've got Gary's thing here. All right, let's see it. What have we got? That's it. Oh, That's Catwoman, Black Cat. Batman, Spider Man. I traded him a sideshow thing, uh, head, one on one scale thing head for this picture. Got to talk to him a couple times while he made it. And it's, oh, I, what would I give to have this back? I don't know who has it. I, eh, fuck, but it's, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, he made if that. If there's anyone out there who's got this, talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> get it back, it back. Get, in, get in touch with please. one of us, please. Yeah, <laughs> Alfred back there cooking up the vittles, right? Yeah, wow. so that's a nice. I picture. couldn't tell if that was Alfred or Stan Lee for a minute. Then it's Alfred. Um, yeah, he he was nice enough to, and John Byrne was a sweet guy. He was a great guy. He is a great guy. He got yeah. canceled <laughs> early on. He got canceled because in a forum, he said that uh, uh, Jessica Alba, mm -hmm. right? Alba as a uh, the invisible woman looked like a uh, uh, a Mexican hooker. So <laughs> he was. I he's, mean, if the shoe fits, you know. He, he hey yeah. He he's got that kind of sense of humor. He didn't like really mean it, but he got destroyed for that back in the yeah. day. Oh uh, heaven, fucking forbid! You know, Jesus wept. Well, destroy it for a lot less these days. Yeah. True. <laughs> You went against the narrative, sir. You're done. Uh, what's the next one here? Um, Stephen Otten says, Hail drinker, guests, and chat. I'll be lurking in the chat today. Have a great show. Hashtag keep the faith. Thank you, man. Um, Chuck Grable says, Hey, drinker, I know this uh, doesn't have to do with movies, but do you and your other hosts have a favorite American muscle car? And also, what, uh, sorry, do you what in American we call rednecks? Uh, do you have, I guess, what we in America call rednecks. Yeah, we have them over here. They're they usually wear Burberry, uh, and we call them chavs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, for if I was to pick an American muscle car, probably the '67 Shelby Mustang GT500. If if I was going to pick one, <laughs> see when you uh, describe cars, I, I'm like, I, is that a graphics card or is it? Like uh, <laughs> I have to go for um, an Impala. I don't think it's really a muscle car, but it's it's. I just love the fucking Impala. After being a supernatural fan, for it so was long, supernatural. Of course, it was. Did, did I, you I, guys predictable as predictable? Otherwise, you'll be the Ford GT. Did Did you guys watch Lockdown at all? The the Vancouver one. Yeah. You know when they were talking about American muscle cars, and it's like, uh, you know, they they saw things like you know the the Shelby and and uh, you know all these different like big powerful American cars in the seventies. And they said, right, we're going to produce our own version for the, the UK. And they produced the Ford Capri. Yes. And it was a 1.3 liter. 
<laughs> my dad had one of those. A fucking dad had a Ford Free. <laughs> he had a full Fortina too. It, it just it, it looked like a I don't know. It looked like a Mustang that had become anorexic. Yeah, and yeah. just <laughs> withered away. <laughs> Such a shame. Uh, why did everything in the UK have to be smaller and shitter? This, this that was just like what I grew up with. Um, SMW one seven five says, "Any advice on approaching literary agents for representation?" My sci-fi manuscript has been edited, and I'm debating whether to uh, self-publish or go traditional. Uh, yeah, so if you're going to approach literary agents, just keep in mind they probably look at like five hundred manuscripts a week, so it's got to stand out. It's got to be interesting in some way. Um, don't try and be all cute in your cover letter and say how you're like the greatest writer that's ever lived or anything. Just be polite and professional, but just put so much effort into your first couple of pages because that's what they're going to read more than anything else. Uh, so you've got to try and grab them and just, yeah, try and make it interesting. Give them a hook to draw them in uh, because, yeah, like I say, they, they trawl through a lot of shit and you've got to try and stand out. Um Don Sambo says, just another person sending money for another round your way. Uh, enjoying <laughs> your happy hour and extra shot series. Never put the bottle down. I never will. I've got my rum right here. <laughs> um, Sam Neary says... Is Mount Gay? No, that is Boom Boo. Oh, okay. Boom Boo rum. It's Mount really Gay good. Superior. This is superior. No, yeah. this, is, this is the best rum. Genuinely. Ooh, I've really um, beaten an entire Scott. mountain of gay, though. Yeah, we know you're into the big game over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a mountain, that's as big as it gets. I yeah. thought you'd only get halfway up more. <laughs> I got the still, full way. Still climbing that mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the reach uh, the peak of gay. Yeah. Sam <laughs> Neary says... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna make silly jokes. That's all. So go on, go on. <laughs> no, no, finish it. <laughs> finish it. No, no. Uh, finish him. Uh, Sam Neary says, "Drinker, you positively dashing connoisseur of good booze, uh, quality movies, and women of ill repute." Yeah, fucking tell me about it, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had nights out in Dundee. Uh, you. <laughs> You look like you're about to join Jake and Elwood on their mission from God. <laughs> yeah, I just need a, yes. a, I need a trophy. Um, as he is, 042 says, uh, when you do your Farscape, uh, make sure to point out James Gunn took a lot of his ideas from Guardians. Uh, sorry, for Guardians from Farscape. Gunn even admitted to it, uh, but no talk about that. Really? Uh, yeah, didn't know that. Um, Zoso says, Ellie's gay, by the way. <laughs> Uh, I never would have known, to be honest. They were so subtle about it in, in Last of Us 2, so I don't know, man. What? In Last of Us 2? Yeah, Ellie's gay. What? Would you have known it as? Would you have known? She got me. It was so well done and so well told. It was It was genuinely a story for the ages. Um, I like the way that the girl ditched her boyfriend after he got her pregnant. And then she went, oh, I fancy some Les now. Yeah, what an awesome character. That, that What was her name? D or something? Oh, or God. Something. Okay, here we go. Um, I just remember she had a giant fucking nose. I don't remember her name. Jeez. Oh, come on. Such a memorable character. Uh, was it Russell? No, it wasn't Russell. Was it Abby Smash? Smash? No, it wasn't Abby Smash. <laughs> Was it the heavily pregnant woman that they sent out on combat missions behind enemy lines who no, could was... somehow leap across <laughs> fucking gantries and stuff? <laughs> it was it was Ellie tries to tell woman Dina, it was she... Dina, it Dina. was fucking Dina. Yes. Yeah, and when Ellie tried to tell Dina that she's immune to the infection and Dina just went shut up and pregnant. Yeah. Now we're now like... we're a lesbian mum couple. Now we're a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're a lesbian. We're yeah. a lesbian. <laughs> we're a lesbian now. Uh, what a, what I like a the way that they used. Oh God, what was the guy called now? Owen. Owen? No, no, that oh. was Abby's which, smash. Which guy? Which guy? Dean is was... smash. Oh, Diver the diverse a, guy. A diverse Asian, diver yeah, diverse Asian guy. Um, 
who's a cop as well. These are just so That's memorable, good. such memorable characters in this game. Um, they don't fucking die in the same scene. I don't. Remember. <laughs> I, I know. Remember them. Way too low. <laughs> oh, Jesse was his name. Jesse, it was, it, that's I, correct. I believe it was David Lopan. Uh, I like the way that <laughs> I like the way that he was literally just used as a sperm donator for Dina. Uh, yep. When he found out that, he should have just been like, "Ah, this sort of thing pisses me off no end." <laughs> now let me get <laughs> shot in the face. <laughs> oh fucking hell! That game oh, it's going to haunt me to my days. Yeah, I made you play it as well. I know. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> and then I dragged you both on EFAP to talk about people praising it. <laughs> what yes. a wonderful little system we got run. <laughs> it was just that, that, in all fairness, the EFAP is more like group therapy than. Well, do you remember? I can't remember if you guys were on the. I know Az was on the episode. But it was when Just Right said that Joel caused every death in post mm. Last of Us. <laughs> every uh, single fucking death. Like everything's me. Joel. Yeah, everything's Joel's fault. <laughs> fucking Joel. He's the Grim yeah, Reaper. Fuck you, fuck you Joel. Uh, that's what you get for trying to save a person that you love. From crazy Bastard. people trying to harvest her brain, like without any consideration for anything. The fucking fireflies, but there's still people who defend that. Like, oh, you yeah, could have just left her to have her brain pulled out. It's like, yeah, nah, actually, actually, no. Nah. Uh, I I hate what this what this series became because I think that the first game struck a perfect balance. It gave you a morally ambiguous situation at the end where it was like there wasn't a clear cut answer to it, but it came down to a person's love for someone else. Your yes. father's love for I'd his always... daughter, and that was a perfect ending. Dude, you I don't thought... need to go anywhere beyond that. That would I been thought it. it was deliberate that they made it so because you know if they had made it really clean cut and said we can save the world with her, it's up to you guys, and then they chose no. That would have been a bit weirder. But if you remember, the... <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone, get your dicks out, dicks out dicks for Harambe, dicks out for Harambe. <laughs> um, <laughs> They take all of Joel's shit, they welch on the deal, they have her unconscious, we don't even know that she agreed, and uh, he didn't get consulted at all, and they don't even... Uh, El Ellie idea... didn't know she was dying. Ellie did yeah. not know she was dying, no. And the idea that you could get this thing... You know, like, if they managed to synthesize a fucking cure from her? It's like, you do get that the world is basically donezo anyway, right? Like how we... How are they going to distribute that worldwide? They they ain't as what they will do is use it as a power play and they're gonna try and take over with their cure. That's what it would exactly. be. Exactly. I I was you. This is the thing, right? I was fine with um, buying into the concept that it's, uh, you know they they can harvest this cure and potentially you know after a period of time they might be able to distribute it to humanity. So it it really comes down to a moral choice between helping a large number of people that you don't know or saving one person that you love dearly. Um, and that's what Joe ultimately chose. That is fine as, as a storytelling device. I'm okay with it. But to try and then recontextualize it in the next game as, no, Joe was just an evil bastard who who selfishly chose one person over, over multitudes of others. That's just a shit thing to do to that character. You've, you've ruined a carefully constructed moral question and you've turned it into a simple binary no he was wrong yeah that's what i fucking hate about it there's a, there's a lot of shit that does that where they make the next one then they confirm what is to be interpreted about the first one and you're like ah uh, you fucking shouldn't have touched it that wasn't yours to touch yeah yeah well fuck it fuck cuckman uh bring on the third one dude bring it on it's like um it's like the sequels like when they commentate on like what happened in the in the first six films they're like you know, it's like you know the Jedi. Mm, they weren't very good. They allowed Palpatine to win. It's like fuck you. <laughs> like Palpatine did not make that shit easy for them to let happen. Like they all fucking got slaughtered. And it's like yeah, well, not very good, are they? Not that, very good. That, uh, that's the same. Fucking, that's the same argument that you got from that that mayor of Rivertown or whatever the fuck it was called. Where it's like, ha. Huh. Your your father couldn't even kill a dragon with with one fucking bolt from a ballista, even though no one else could ever possibly do it. <laughs> what do you have to say about any of this? Just fuck off! Like fuck you, off. Can't, you can't apply that to any like you can't apply that ridiculous criteria to people and expect them to adhere to it. Well, remember, he's like you know, a Jedi was the reason that Vader rose. A Jedi trained him. It's like 
And having Luke say that, by the way, it's like, I hate you so much. <laughs> yeah. Piece of shit. Fuck. And then they fuck have Ray remind him, but it was a Jedi that saved him. It's just like, that oh, scene. Oh, fuck off, Ray. <laughs> that scene needs to be dipped in ass. It'd be great if he just turned around, oh, fuck off, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been the perfect response. <laughs> fuck you, Ray. Gary, Did you I ready for an the compressor. She they did. bypassed the compressor. Gary, I got another one. You ready? Oh, boy. I don't know if I'm ready. Captain Leonard McKenzie was the father of who? I know this one. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> Do you want to Captain give you the options? Ms. Marvel. The options. All right. Namor, Quicksilver, Wolverine, and Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Not Namor, it's not quick. So what was the other two? Wolverine and Hawkeye. Oh my no. Um 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 Wolverine. Dun, 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 dun. No, it was Namor. Namor. Oh Namor. I was trying to think of origins, but uh well yeah, I haven't read um Babes. when did they make yeah, I haven't read all the Silver Age anymore. Fucking sue me. Fake nerd. Fake yep. geek girl. Ellie's gay, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you start throwing that into like random stuff. <laughs> I think we all need that reminder. Just You're in the middle of the video, though. and I don't know if you are aware, but Ellie's gay. Is... Yeah. Also, I yeah. will be right back, Jens. You carry on. Yeah. All his right, no first problem, appearance uh, was in Motion Picture Funnies Weekly, April 1939. Oh, wow. Damn. Last appearance, Submariner 46. February 1972. Comic I actually own. I like it. Um, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, Deal Ramil says, Drinker, you should watch and review Daredevil on Netflix. It's one of the best things Marvel has ever done and so much better than the, the Disney Plus shows. Uh, yeah, there's not much I can argue with on that one. I loved uh, Daredevil. Um, season two was a bit rough when they had the magical, ridiculous space ninjas, but like season I three, like when they bring back Fisk, fucking hell, I love Wilson Fisk. What a great character. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, that's Vincent D'Onofrio for you, though, you know? Yeah. yeah. I love season uh, two, but I like the hand. So that's uh, that's my era. I just saw the first image for um, Amazon's uh, Wheel of Time. And it's terrible. <laughs> I, I, it thought it was, I thought it was a screenshot from the Eternals. Okay, can I, you share it and I'll, I'll punt it up? Sure. Fuck I thought it was. I thought it was terrible. a screenshot from the Eternals, and it's not. So you'll understand why I think <laughs> it just oh, looks like the Eternals, fuck. doesn't it? We're we're all just out for a walk. Yeah. Oh my god, they're so diverse. I'm literally I know. shaking. I am literally shaking. I am literally shaking. <sighs> Christ. Ah, uh, fuck it. Who cares? It's going to be it's another thing ruined. Um, Claudia Rogajan says, the MCU used to be the gold standard for continuity and detail in their movies, and now they're messing it up. Uh, yeah, they're, now they're just trying to rewrite the continuity uh, to try to try and fit in with the crap they're making now, and it's it's shit, really. Um, Mark Dellard says, The drowning and coming back to life was stolen from the Vampire Diaries when Stephen the Vampire was locked in a safe and dumped in a lake. Yeah, so this is from the old guard. Uh, yeah, good point, actually. Um, but yeah, it's a shit thing to end up with <laughs> for anyone. Um, RRTNZ says, Drinker, you pissed pence of pros. Uh, have a drink on me. For a change, I recommend Electra Assassin, 1987 Frank Miller graphic novel. Similar character dynamic to Drake and Anya in Redemption, uh, so you may enjoy it. Cheers. Oh, cool. Um, damn, is it something that I've unknowingly ripped off, or what? Ladies. Uh, Electra Assassin. I don't know. Gary, do you know about that one? I do. Uh, did you unknowingly? And it's a pretty basic story. It's good, though. I'd read it. Um, okay. Anything Frank Miller from the 80s is uh, pretty fucking spot on. I was meaning to ask you guys as well. Did you guys watch Invincible? Yes. 
because um, I'm about halfway through it at the moment. I think in episode five, I've just finished, so I'm loving it so far. Yes, it's it's good stuff. Yep. The only stuff that I didn't like was the, the the stuff that they forced in the forced diversity, which isn't in the comics. But um, you mean Amber? Well, not first of all. I mean, no. When he first meets Amber, I get why he likes her. In in, in even in the in the cartoon, but um, she really turns and changes, and then he just like why. Why are you with him? And then his his best mate, who's gay, he meets up with this guy who last year he hooked up with, and they like got it on and all this kind of stuff. So he's going back to meet him at college, and it's like they are total strangers who have never met, and they're both straight. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. It's it's like you can't write, you can't write those characters. And yeah. it ends up with them sticking the 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 gay character. He spends like the last two episodes just sat in his car <laughs> doing nothing while everything else is going on around that's going to go on around, which I won't tell you what it is. Um, and then there's a thing with his girlfriend at the end. We just like what? So apart from that, but everything else, like with the father and the mother and the and the son. And the rest of the, you know, the uh, the organization and the... That's great stuff. All of that is just fucking brilliant stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that does get... It gets better and better, that. But, yeah, there's some... It, they do do a couple of weird, weird decisions in that for, in that uh, series. The the voice cast is incredible as well. Mm. Like the, the amount of celebrities they got in to do this is really impressive. Um. But yeah, like um, Omni Man, like the the performance there, the characterization of him, everything great. Like, oh really hell yeah! I, I mean, he's you know, obviously, you know, stuff's going on. Uh, but my god, he's such a well written character and so well acted. And yeah, I just uh, love that first episode where it's like it's all fairly restrained and bloodless up to a point and then you just get that scene where he murders the entire um the entire superhero team and it's just the goriest most horrific like series of deaths you can imagine because <laughs> i hadn't seen the i read the comic uh um, no, I, I had no idea what was going to happen so i that beginning bit i was just like ooh, they're all they're all being summoned to uh to some major event that's going on and uh yeah just when the just the, the ending of the episode i was just like what that's really good yeah no it was really good it was awesome stuff um and yeah i'm looking i'm looking forward to seeing where it ends up to be honest so you won't yeah. be disappointed good um orders militant says hmm strength name for an efap hello drinker and mauler hello to you orders militant and yeah this is this is a new thing that I've been mucking around with. So, like, as much as it's been great doing the happy hours where I talk about a movie or, or a specific thing or whatever, sometimes it's nice just to get a bunch of people on and just um, chat about whatever the fuck's happening, like, at the moment in in the, in the entertainment industry. So that's kind of why I'm doing this. So hopefully it works out. Dudes. Yeah. Uh, Claudia Roganjan says, I like to think of Kang as not canon. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the best way to think of him. Um, farewell, Thunderchild. Um, are the ten rings each the size of a tangerine? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she had a tangerine the size of a tangerine. <laughs> uh, T. Cap says, "Knew a little warlord the size of a tangerine." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Have you seen that drinker? The the thing from um, oh the man who would be king. No, no. Have That's you the seen the whole the, the, the whole tangerine thing? I, I don't think from, I've seen from the, the meme. No. From the Dark Knight. No, no, I haven't. No. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it for you. I'm gonna get it for you, and it, it's gonna some epic memeage. Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> it's called the Tangerine Knight. Okay. <laughs> So okay, I'll uh, I'll share it up. I'll bring it up. All right, cheers, man. Let's do some share audio. 
This is this is the tangerine night. All right, let's give it a go. A long time ago, I was in Burma. My friends and I were working for the local government. They were trying to government. buy the authority of tribal leaders by bribing them with a tangerine. <laughs> Their caravan <laughs> was raided in the forest north of Rangoon by a bandit. So we went looking for the tangerine. <laughs> in six months, we never met anyone. <laughs> One day, I saw a child playing with a tangerine. <laughs> a bandit had been throwing them away. <laughs> well, because he thought it was good sport. Because some men aren't looking for anything logical. Some men just want a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. I was in Burma. My <laughs> friends and I were working for the bandit. Besides, tangerine. <laughs> so we went looking for the local government. In six months, I saw a tangerine. The size of a tangerine. That's top quality memes right here. I saw so a tangerine good. the size of a tangerine. A tangerine. A <laughs> <laughs> tangerine night. Yeah, man. It's uh, been a, it's been a favorite beautiful. meme of mine for like a decade. I feel old now. <laughs> that was put on YouTube in on t in 2009. Yeah. Uh, memes peaked right in 2009, yeah, didn't they? One year after, one year after the release of the film. Ah, Jesus. Uh, what's the next one here? Uh, TCAP says, sorry, drinker, but episode four was a clusterfuck. Um, I thought it was good. Uh, maybe I'm in the minority on this one. It seems sorry, like the rest I'll, of you guys haven't seen it yet. I'll watch it and debate you live on the internet. Mm. In the marketplace of ideas. Wow. Are you going to, going to debate me like Jarbo? I will. And then that it, goes. So you were gonna run away then? Yeah, the stream yeah. stopped. Got oh, drink and my PC ran out of battery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to go now. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Rob H says, "Damn, the drinker is looking dapper as fuck. Busy day, so I have to watch the re-upload of this one." Cheers, man. Uh, well, thank you for the donation. Anyway, I appreciate it. Uh, Alex, Alex Lee says, "This is a strange episode of the Real BBC." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same here, Gerald Armstrong. This is the Real BBC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, what can I say? Our paths keep crossing. Uh, new yeah. speakers says, Hello, drinker. The difference, uh, sorry, time difference is quite a nuisance. It's 5 a.m. here, and I might not be here Oof. when you read this, but would you consider a happy hour for Lethal Weapon or Blues Brothers? Love from Japan. I think we said we would do a Lethal Weapon at some point, so yeah, definitely. Um, non Vitae Rex says, How did Strange survive being stuffed in the chest if his girlfriend dies in the car crash? He's only alive in the movie because she helps him after he portals to the hospital. Uh, I'm yeah. that event doesn't happen the same way. Yeah, and it's weird because the show doesn't frame that as a choice where it diverges. It's like just taken as that, that was how things played out already, so it was really confusing and weird. She chose to go in his car that day. That's what, yeah. Yeah, well, what if? But then the real what if is that she died in the car crash and he didn't. So eh, it's kind of it's a weird one. Um, what's the next one? Craigley, the Craigley Lawrence experience says fantastic idea, drinker, looking sharp. Thank you. I've got a tie and everything. Like it's lovely. Hey, you are uh, looking dapper. You are looking dapper. I know. It's not going to last for long. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Thing is, I'm actually naked from this. I've just got so. this cum stained t shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Levy, uh, really. Levy says, looking very spiffy, drinker, a true gentleman, not just a drinker. Cheers, love all, to all the guests. There you go, you got some love, gentlemen. Mm. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, Tommy Ratin says, uh, hey, you sexy night dreams. Well, what can I say? Ooh. Ooh. Reverend Norris, a question for you, Drinker, and all his guests. You get to spend 24 hours with any character of your choice from the MCU. Who do you choose and why? 
Ooh. Also, why is it Black Widow? <laughs> uh, well, she's not going to bang me, so I might as well pick somebody interesting. Um, who? Hmm. Who hold the MCU. Yeah, it'd be right. interesting to have a chat with Vision. See if we can get some secrets of the universe out of him. Maybe Thanos. Be like, what's up, dude? Wow. Um... <laughs> I think Marvel's Katie. Mm-hmm. Mm. I I mm. see I see her as as the next uh, superstar breakout superstar for Marvel. See, so, yeah, I understand where you're going with that, but the reason I chose Thanos was to ask him specifically about Shang Chi. Is he excited oh, for that movie? Or not? Like, okay. Thanos, do you think you have the ability to debate Thanos into not wiping out Ooh. half the universe? I'm not black. I can't do that. Because <laughs> a, a good argument is more powerful than any weapon. Mm. As you know. Mm. I mean, we don't know what the argument is, but it is, it is a good argument. I know how to See, do that. Like, Thanos, if there were an argument that would convince you, what would it be? And then, there you go, I'd get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to spend some time with Wanda and say, just don't do Wanda Vision. <laughs> Just wonder why <laughs> why would you do this wonder, yeah. wonder say, we, people people like you don't don't ruin it wonder you're up here right now don't go don't go down here yeah. <laughs> or, or actually why well, we do go down there yeah well yeah <laughs> we'll do that later wonder i'm i'm no robot i'm no robot wonder this is flesh and bone <laughs> oh flesh and boner one of the two uh, I think I think realistically, uh, I reckon Tony Stark. Yeah, probably. He, that would be a cracking night out. Yeah, uh, Tony Stark or uh, or Doctor Strange or Darcy's boobs. I'm not sure. <laughs> Darcy, Darcy. Oh, Dar yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm she's telling you one thing: she, she better she shut the fuck up. Well, Doctor Strange can probably put a spell on her. Ah, good man. Thanks, Stephen. She is, uh, yeah, the actress is quite well endowed, isn't she? Uh, I, yeah, Cat Denning. I, not yeah. that I've done my research. Not in well. the throat department, though. No. <laughs> oh, no, she is well endowed in the throat department, unfortunately, as well. Oh, I see what you mean. I mm. simply meant she, she remind, remember that? Oh, you should show Drinker the, uh, the opening 10 minutes of that merch video. 10 seconds, sorry, of the merch video from uh, a certain. <gasps> round. Oh, okay, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> Oh, as is you, on the case. I am a, you are a horrible man mauler at times. <laughs> I want other people to suffer. Why should I be the only one? Uh and just just while Oz is bringing that up, I'll do a couple more super chats. Um yeah, uh the Craig Lee Lawrence experience, uh the new what if episode is amazing. Hashtag strange. Uh yeah, I, I quite liked mm -hmm. it. Um best name I could think of says I think Peggy should have gained two hundred pounds of muscle like Steve did. Um yeah, I mean, she definitely bulked up. I, I, it's weird. I think the the title card gave her such uh, an unrealistic proportion, and that's not how she looks in the actual show. She's definitely got more muscle, but she's not like ridiculously huge or anything. So it's a bit, a bit unfortunate. That's what they chose to use. Um, Uber Geek says, "I'm seeing Shang Chi and his big ring tomorrow, so I'll let you guys know on Friday night tights tomorrow, <laughs> gents." Okay, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Cock Rings. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> the ten butt plugs. <laughs> we got it, um, Drinker. You gotta, you gotta make it through the first ten seconds. Uh, I'll try. Right. And when you see, you... It hit me with it. I don't know if Gary's done this either. <laughs> well, I think Gary did, right? Did it? Fuck. I don't even remember. Uh, are you ready? Dreaming too much. No. Good morning. Mmm. So, a number of you have been asking me, hey, Grace, when are we getting some BTT merch again? And the answer is today. Fuck. Fuck you just got to turn your volume down, everyone. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. That, that so stabbed the universe. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, it, it, it just went through my soul. You know, people like that just shouldn't be on the internet. Oh, the oh, oh my! Look at look at look. We've I'm, so... we've, got, we've got casualties in the audience. Yeah, the audience are yeah. hurt. Yeah, they were, yeah. Uh, we got men down. We got hey Dan, how you doing? We got we got we got men down in the audience. Yeah, 
Medic. Brutal. Brutal. Medic. Medic. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, chat. Sorry. About oh that. damn, we lost. We lost some good people. <sighs> we lost a lot of good men out there. Um, Salad Cream Boy says Doctor Strange copied fixed points in time from Doctor Who. Is that a thing? Is that true? Yep. Yeah. Um, which they couldn't. They, they're not allowed to steal that because the Marvel Universe hasn't been. De- when the fuck did Kang talk about that? When did anyone else talk about this? They just randomly yeah. decide because the Fringy mentioned that they have fixed points in time now, and I was like, how are they, how are they doing that too? Boo. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, and it's like, how is this decided? Like, so like most of time is is pretty malleable, and you can change it as you wish. But like certain things are just immutable for no reason. It's like, I mean, who decides that and why? Kang. Well, that was the thing. It, it was, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Doctor Who, he mentions that like the Time Lords were the ones that um, essentially came up with some kind of like ruling on which things stay and which things don't. Yeah. In um, in Marvel, who the fuck? Who the, who, who did Doctor Doctor Strange get this from? And they treat it like um, if you guys have seen the Time Machine, the movie where mm-hmm. when uh, he goes back in time to try and save his wife, she keeps dying in different ways. Because like it's something that just keeps happening, and even when he tries to stop it, he causes it. I think that's something anyway. But like that seems to be what they're going for in Doctor Strange, the what if, yes. and like that as if it's like she always dies, and it's like that doesn't. I don't think you can tell that story while also having us fucking look at the lo- the Loki stuff. Where it's like anything is possible now, and it's like, well, no, it's not. You just there's fixed points in time. What the fuck is happening? Uh, it's just yeah. It's such a shit way of trying to like deal with all these different aspects of it. Um, Ching Chong Redemption says, "Think of the earless, you ear earlessists." Uh, yeah, that was the the um, abomination that's got ears now. Um, Andrew yeah. Clark says, "Some article thinks Shang Chi will do ninety million dollars on day one." Yeah, fuck that. Um, Kevin O'Neill says, "Place your bets. If Shang Chi is bad and flops, it will be blamed on pandemic or on toxic fans." Uh, yeah. The pandemic's amazing because you can pretty much like blame any movie failing on that. It's like, ah, well, we're living in a post-lockdown world now. The box office isn't the same as it was. Whatever. They can blame it. They can blame it on me because I'm I'm putting money on it being a success. So there'll be people out there wanting me to fail, and thus will refuse to watch it. And yeah. don't worry, chat. We're not going to leave a man behind. <laughs> uh, no, Deadline said it, uh, Shang-Chi was, was on track to making 90 million this weekend worldwide. There's no fucking way. No, I just, if, it, it, if it makes like 30 million, I'll be, I'll be fucking shocked. Imagine it makes like, like a billion in the opening I weekend. It, we're all just it, like, what? It's, it's I call tracking between 35 to 55 million. That's the tracking on it. Mm. it Deadline came yeah. out and said 90 million worldwide. Um, Stop killing art more, Jesus! Yeah, wow. my job. Okay, I just check my. Wow. Theater, uh, I'll just stop betting that everything will be a success and I can kill it all. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, theater, the theater I'm going to, which is the first show here in SoCal in my area, uh, fifty tickets are sold in a. I, I do believe it's five hundred seat IMAX. Damn. Uh, I've also got uh, I've got Andre here from Midnight's Edge. Hello, Andre. How are you doing, man? Hello, greetings. I'm good, thank you. How are you all doing, gentlemen? Yeah, hey, hey. We, wonderful. We are, we are enjoying ourselves, and uh, we were yeah, we were just talking about Shang Chi's prospects of being not shit. Yeah, cinema. well, I've already I've already seen it, so I can talk to both the movie and uh, give some box office rev- impressions so far. Oh, 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 oh Andre. Is it an absolute triumph? It is not an absolute triumph. <laughs> not in any way, shape, or form. Lies. Holy Lies. shit, imagine Propaganda. my shock. Propaganda, don't listen. It's a triumph. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what, what was your overall take thing. from the movie? To, to me, as I put in the review that we put up a few hours ago, and also in the stream that we had like after I saw it yesterday, uh, the thing with it is that there's no individual part of it that's like bad there's like loads of good things about it there's like some good acting there's some good scenes there's some good moments but really it feels like it's three completely separate movies that have been chopped up and then unevenly spliced together it's like one of the worst tonal messes i've ever seen wow is it like a shakespearean 
Experience. Experience, yeah. Mm, if if Shakespeare was on drugs, maybe. If Shakespeare <laughs> was, was on drugs and a complete amateur. Okay. Uh, if, uh, if, if Shakespeare decided, hey, I'm going to try to make some Chinese opera right now, and then I'm going to try for comedy. I'm going to try to mix that all in with my own tragedy and see what happens. Like, it was really schizophrenic. That's like the I best mean, uh, thing I can say about it. It's I, complete schizophrenic. Did, did they try and work, um, you know, like politics into it? Yes. Is it, is it, yes. Is it a woke kind of movie or? As I said, it's it's three movies rolled into one. It seems like, and of those three movies, one is woke. Like my my interpretation of it is basically that you like one movie that's in there is the um, is the um, uh, Fu Manchu origin story and the character totally is Fu Manchu he doesn't look like Fu Manchu he doesn't have the name Fu Manchu he has some rings but it's Fu Manchu like the China, the fans in in so Chinese social media are completely right about that and that movie is made in the style of crouching tiger and hidden dragon yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and hero to the point of literally ripping off individual scenes. And that's a pretty decent movie. And then you have a standard Marvel movie uh, modeled after Ant-Man with like the Ant-Man style of humor with like the friends of the city and everything like that. So you have that in there. That's typical Marvel. So far, there's no politics of any kind. But then as the final movie, this is the Chinese Black Panther movie with Chinese Wakanda and all of these things. And this one is all about the women. This is all about taking down the evil father and the women rule in Chinese Wakanda. Right. Uh, so, so, and that's where Aquafina really comes into her oh, own life God, and finds Jesus the Christ meaning knows. and everything oh, like no, that. No, oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so that's like the underneath that you have like the patriarchal uh, Chinese society and the one part of the movie where they really chose to highlight the identity politics is in the most China pandering part of it, just like Mulan. It's like Mulan all over. Right. Okay. So, like, oh, yeah, no, it, they, it, it, have, kind of, they have a man that's a woman. Yeah, it kind of feels like they're trying to do a bit of everything. Then Chong yeah, is a woman. They, they are trying to appeal to everyone with this film, and it's yeah, all but, over the place. As a result, that's exa yeah, exactly. It's completely all over the place. Like watching it, I almost got like a whiplash from like my head turning from the different movies that were in there. It's like really a schizophrenic experience. How you go from like this real epic sad drama. To like this really overblown Marvel comic book movie, and then r just complete ridiculous comedy, uh, and all within the span of like one minute. God damn! Yeah, it gonna, genuinely put, sounds like a mess. Then I'm going to put in a private chat, Andre, uh, yeah. who I who I believe is in the end credit scene. Okay. <laughs> can you just can you just confirm or deny that this is correct? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, as soon as I see it here, um, I can I can uh, confirm fifty percent of that. Okay, and that's the second part of it. No, it's the no. Okay. Actually, sorry, no, sorry. I uh, I misread this late here. I can confirm zero of that. That's I. Oh. That's completely incorrect. Oh my! Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Completely as his source is wrong again. Oh, what about this one? Well, it was uh, it was none, an none yeah. of those appear in the movie. Okay. Uh, mm. Whereas Nodrotic is completely correct. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh no! I mean, <laughs> oh no! I must say, there is, uh, there is, oh my there God, is. You have to say for the credit scene, everyone. It's so amazing. Oh, that's okay. I just read that. That's sad, Gary. Why did you have to have us know that? <laughs> Uh, to, to be clear, clear that's not the end credit. One that's one. the mid credit scene. Uh, oh. That's the mid credit scene that has the. Uh, there's also a, a, a post credit scene, but that's something else. That's a Disney Plus plug of something that I'm sure is going to be announced tomorrow or something. I'm, uh, I support uh, the guy in chat who said it should have been Fing Fang Foom. That's so who should have said that. About about that, yeah. Uh, I, I, shall, I shall I shall say no more uh, until asked to reveal it. But uh, just hold hold on to that thought. So I'm going to say about that. 
Right. Yeah, the, the guest is already left in the back after seeing the who's in the end credits scene. So Bing Bang Boom is now female. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Xing Shang. Xing I, actually, actually I, I do believe it was referred to as a her. So you might not be <laughs> Oh, I dare so. No, really? No. I, 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 don't, I don't recall. Like, it was only like later it pointed out to me that, uh, that, 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 that that may have been Fing Fang Fum, but I, but I do believe that what I thought was a Lovecraftian dragon was referred to as a female. That could be a much mad, but I think so, that they're talking about she's coming through or something. Lovecraftian dragons can be women too. <laughs> Don't <laughs> assume their gender. Um, yeah, so uh, I've just, uh, like, I've got another guest in here. It's Bolstrek, uh, who has been on multiple streams with me over the over the past couple of years. So how, how the hell are you, man? It's good to have you on. Hello, my friend. It's odd seeing you actually on camera. <laughs> yeah, I do have a face, believe it or not. Yeah, there and, you go, uh, and, and you know that uh, given that I've shown up, something's going to explode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't fucking say that, man. It's like every time bowstrike has been on a, a stream with me, there's some been some kind of weird technical problem and, and, and it's, oh. everything's got messed up. Uh, yeah, so fingers crossed that I'm won't a, happen tonight I'm and we won't all die. How are you doing in the Sheepression in uh, Canada? Um, well... We have an election going on. It's depressing. Uh, our choices suck. And yeah, that's about all I had to say about that. But yes, uh, we do have a uh, a she pression here in Canada, according yeah. to my leaders. So, uh, yay us, Fiddle Castro Jr. Oh, oh yeah, Gary, and uh, thank you for that information in the chat. That's that's lovely, dude. Mm. I'm here. To, uh, I am uh, rage farming on my own time. That's it. Oh, well, you're welcome. So. <laughs> Hello to everybody else. Andre, yeah. I don't Greetings. believe we've ever streamed together. No, How I believe this is the first time. I'm good. Thank you. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. You as well, sir. And Mahler, how are things? Oh, long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As always with you. Everything is long. Uh, yeah. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I, I'm doing fine. I'm playing. I'm playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I'm slowly moving through the trivia section, and I've I've even got I've got a Spider Man one. Gary, you think you can handle it? Oh boy! All right, if, him with it, if, him. You, if you get this wrong, you know you, you, your cred is gonna plummet. All right, your 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 nerd points are dropping by the minute, Gary. So you oh, got to pull this Christ. back. Uh, when everybody turns fifty two, well, I, I, <laughs> I've done as many drugs as I have. Uh, Spider-Man was talked into creating the Spider-Mobile by the advertising firm of who? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God. There's no way I'm going to know this one. Give me the, give me the choices. Uh, Raphael Vondrak, Carter Lombardo, Fuller Hay, and Grib Edwards. Same again. Raphael Vondrak, Carter Lombardo, Fuller Hay, and Grib Edwards. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I, 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 I read that one as a kid. I have the Spider Mobile, the Mego version, and I, I have no idea what. Uh... Well, uh, phone a friend. Anyone else know? <laughs> Let's go. I've got no fucking clue, mate. The chat's probably already looked uh, up. No clue. Yo, uh, the, unfortunately, yeah. chat has said a couple of them. Lombardo. Lombardo. Lombardo seems to be the common one. Should we go with Lombardo? All right, let's go with Lombardo. It was correct. Nice. Lombardo. There you go. Let's just pretend that was your guess, Gary. Your cred is safe. I don't, I'm not worried about my cred with the spider mobile. Uh, <laughs> what? I like bought it as a kid. I read that comic as a kid, and uh, I don't think I've read it in 30 years. So It's my favorite Spider-Man story. You, uh, well, Gary, you used to own a comic book store. I'm reliably informed, so uh, you don't have to worry about cred. I did okay. I you're all right, man. You're all right. Uh, Bullstrike, I was going to ask, actually, since you're on now, we've been talking a little bit about Hello? the Marvel What's If series. Have you been watching it at all? You, do you, I, are you familiar uh, with it? I am still getting over being forced into watching Loki. Ah, uh, okay. I wasn't yeah. going to watch Loki, and um, a, a couple of my uh, YouTube friends peer pressured and bullied me into watching it. Uh, so that was two days of my life I won't be getting back. Uh, I've 
watched some videos on what if, but since I'm not covering it, um, my desire to spend even five minutes on it is, uh, is non-existent. That, that's what I do these days. Basically I ignore everything current because it's all shit. Um, are you telling me that you didn't enjoy Loki? Um, well, it did. It, it, no, it did have some great anti-male messages. Um, I like the fact that the title character was a guest on his own show, replaced by another character of the same title but different gender. Um, the um, the getting kicked in the nuts over and over again scene that's got to be the most riveting thing I've watched in years. To be um, fair. Loki's not even in the show, like at all. No, well, no, it's uh, it's. Uh, I, I may be mistaken in this, but uh, this doesn't seem to be the same character <laughs> that we were introduced to a decade ago. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, yeah, um, I watched Wandavision, thought it was good, then saw the end. I don't need to say anything. Yeah. Uh, I actually saw probably <laughs> the last three episodes. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think I made it halfway through the first episode and pretty much said to hell with this. Yeah, uh, it's probably, probably a wise choice in retrospect. That that show was painful to watch. Well, it's... Uh, I, I uh, If anybody remembers two years ago, and I will admit when I was wrong, I said the woke era of hell was coming to an end. So this was actually, I think I said this the first time I drink here, drink her and I streamed together, which was a little over two years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I uh, was we were so young and optimistic back then. I, I, no, I, I, I honestly figured it was going to be the end of it. And then the, um, the virus of unknown origin happened and I figured, okay, this is going to be the end. Uh, in terms of everything that I've seen this year, good God. Uh, it's, uh, but uh, but who's looking forward to uh, the um, the Marvel movie coming out? I believe tonight at midnight. That's oh. that 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 we're all so excited for. Uh, who here can even remember the name? Yeah, I we... didn't even know it was coming out until I saw videos of people talking about how nobody cared that it was coming out. The the Shang Chi is me who's already it. seen it. But oh, about you... the about the name though, they actually make a huge pro point of how it is to be pronounced in the movie, shaming everyone who got it wrong. <laughs> so if you by chance do end up seeing it, you will definitely remember approximately how it's supposed to be pronounced because they really have you on that. Yeah, something like that. Like Chang Chi. Chang Chi. Something Shang, like that. Shang Chi I'm is like a, a massive. It's like a massive turd that you've got brewing for quite a long time, and it's like you know you're not looking forward to it. You're not looking forward to it, but you know it's going to have to happen sooner or later. So it's like I might as well just get this out, and that that's kind of like the feeling towards this movie. Like I, I should experience it and just get it over with. But yeah, I, I'm not enthusiastic about watching it at all. I could see it in two hours. Oh, good times. Look forward to hearing what you think about it. I am. Uh, I, I'm actually being dragged to it this weekend. Uh, so my uh, my nephew just turned ten, and uh, so my brother and I are going to take him out to a movie. And uh, even though I did try talking him out of it, I'm like, just see anything, dude. Anything. No, man, I want to see Chung Chai. It, that's not what it's called, dude. <laughs> go on, go on see I want to see, I wanna see the Marvel movie. I'm like, okay, so. Uh, so for my nephew, maybe I'll get a video out of it, but um, I get to experience it. I didn't want to experience it, but uh, I don't even think there's going to be any humor to be had in this. Well, no, the, the costume is ridiculous, but this one, boring. Um, hey, Andre, you said you've seen it. How, how are we yeah. looking power levels on those rings? Are they outclassing, like, everything? Are they another, oh, God, like... No. Are they shit, or what are we looking at? Uh, well, what we're looking at are basically rings that can move around and they can blast like energy, energy stuff like that. I honestly don't see what was the big deal about them. And here's like the thing: uh, just spoil t the first five minutes a little bit, because uh, Fu Manchu, because that's who he really is, regardless mm -hmm. of what they call him. 
Uh, he gets these rings a thousand years ago, and they contribute mm -hmm. to giving him long life. And he's like this amazing conqueror, just like Fu Manchu. So he conquers the Ottoman Empire. He conquers the Roman Empire. So he's obviously the shit back in the day. And then in contemporary China, he's just like a guy. Whoa, 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 Andre, are you trying to tell me he's a colonizer? Yeah, kind of. Kind of, but uh, but he must have lost somewhere along the line. Like at some Ooh. point, technology caught up with those rings, because what? today what? He's, he's he's just <laughs> he's just a he's just a gang leader in in China these days. He's like head of like the, the oh, Foot oh. Clan or Hand or something. I was gonna say, how did he take over the whole world? Why would he? <laughs> Like, he's got more potential than Genghis fucking Khan at that point with those rings. Yeah, pr pretty much, yeah. Uh, and for some, at some point, between between the flashback of him taking down the Romans and uh, jumping yeah. forward to contemporary era, he Lame. lost all of that. He kept his rings, yeah. but he kept all of that they stuff. couldn't make him any part of the Chinese government, the Chinese government wouldn't like that. Uh, not that it matters, because the movie's not going to be released in China. Oh, there's so <laughs> much in this movie that's going to be so... I, like, I completely understand why the ccp wouldn't want this like to me the movie is so utterly tone deaf it tries so hard to pander to chinese culture without understanding chinese culture and I, I, i'm not expert in it but i but i certainly know enough about it that i see all the offense <laughs> that was in this movie <laughs> And at the same at the same time, get her in the kitchen. They have all this wokeness in it in the pandering Chinese part. So obviously, it's not going to go down well at all. Well, they got an actor who looks more like the uh, what? Uh, who looks more like the uh, the premier or whatever the uh, Xing Jing. Ping, Z Jingping, is that his name? Winnie the Pooh. Winnie, Winnie the, Pooh. the Pooh. Come on. He looks yeah. like yeah. So the actor looks like winner. He doesn't look like Bruce Lee. At all. So, just just looking to clarify, it's canon in MCU now that the Romans were taken out by Fu Manchu, not really. Kang willed it. Kang, Kang did it, yeah. Kang yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah it all happened. Yeah, yeah. So, like, oh, okay. <laughs> do they yeah. mention the blip? Lame. Do they yes, they do. Yes, they do okay. mention the blip. The blip is, it, is referenced. Is it brief or is it very brief? Oh, see, fucking do, laugh. God, it's they're so all doing it that way, man. Do, do, do they reference the Ten Rings as they were in the Iron Man movies? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, they do reference the Iron Man movie. Yes. How much does it uh, pay off that fucking Tony Stark is dead and the Mandarin's running around? <laughs> this is a Marvel. Dude, even, even Ben Kingsley. That's fucking... that's a truth with some modification because like they do get into the Mandarin here. And like if you're a fan of the Mandarin and the comics, let's just say, and you weren't happy with Iron Man three, you're going to be even less happy with this movie. Well, uh, Ben <sighs> Kingsley's in this, right? Yeah, he is. Totally. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm curious to know, but I don't want to spoil it for the rest of you guys. But I want to know what the fuck he's doing in here. Why is he in it? What's he doing? What's he up to? Trevor. Ben Kingsley. Yeah, 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 what's he doing in this movie? What he's doing? Uh, you would like, like uh, if you guys. I'm well, very happy to share it if you guys want me to. I know he's. I know he's Trevor Slattery, but I'm yeah. curious why he's in the movie. You know, what's he doing there? Here, here we've got the answer right here. The tangerine <laughs> running around. <laughs> um, it was a yeah. mandarin the size of a tangerine. It was a mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, if the mandarin is cool, I'm very happy to, to answer exactly what Trevor Slattery is doing there. Jesus. God, I, I want to know. I'm assuming. Yeah, well, just, yeah, like if you're in chat and you don't want to know the, the spoiler for this particular part of the movie, then run away. Run, the run chat now. basically like, says, spoil it. Nobody fucking well, cares. I was about to say, anybody no. in chat who doesn't want this film spoiled, why? <laughs> why, 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 why? <laughs> Uh, all right, basically what <laughs> happens then yeah. is that uh, Fu Manchu, or Wenwu, which is his real name, he, he's pissed at this guy in Iron Man 3. Yes. Because he says he's been living in the shadow, so no one knows his real name, which is Wenwu. They know that there's like this, this Chinese gang leader of some kind. So he was appropriated by this Westerner, who oh. then created <laughs> the Hall of the Mandarin and scared everyone with a stupid actor and the stupid name of a, of a Chinese dish and of an orange, basically. 
Uh, and it was such a personal insult that between the behind the scenes he went and he killed everyone that's associated with creating this myth of the Mandarin, which doesn't exist, apart from the actor, Trevor Slattery. He brought him to his compound to kill him, but he thought he was a funny court jester, so he kept him around for that reason. Is that all he does in the movie? No, no, no. He he helps them find Chinese Wakanda uh, because he's uh, because he's got a pet from there. He's got Headless Narf for pets, and uh, Headless Narf, which I choose to call him, is from Chinese Wakanda. Jesus. Oh, Chinese Wakanda. Uh. Yeah, I know it sounds like a joke, but really, trust me. If you, when you go see this in two hours, you'll uh, just listen to what I say. Chinese Wakanda. That's freaking exactly what it is. And uh, and he's the key to get there because he has a pet <laughs> from Chinese Wakanda. Why is there so many ethno states in Marvel shows? <laughs> and you're, they're all you're, retroactive you're... too. They'll yeah, pop up afterwards. I mean, like it, it's called it, low time. They're, they're all they're all like crazy. That, but, uh, but 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 it is the Chinese Wakanda. Yeah, they're, they're all praised as being like these like ultra like fucking progressive awesome things. But it's like, you know, if you tried to do it the other way, nah. Mm. Yeah, and they they have nicknames for white people when they go there. It's like, man, like you, well, it, it well colonizer. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure yeah, he called them colonizer. Don't touch yeah. me, colonizer. I, I, dude, oh, I was desperate oh, to jump hey, into that scene and be I'm like, sure. Sure. private chat for you, Andre. Oh, I, yeah, Magical sure. Land. Um, is it the one from. Uh, what do they name it? I'm gonna just put it in here. Basing yeah, sure. Is it um? Is it this? Um, may I think it was the maybe I think it was. I I'll, I'll write what I think it was. Okay. What memory? <laughs> okay. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think that's what they called it. Was something along those lines. Okay. 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 Then it's not, that's weird, but. Uh... But I could be misremembering. I mean, there's like some weird made-up name I've never heard before because I'm not familiar with the Chang Chi comics. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a couple of more super chats here uh, because they are for specific people. Uh, D5K11 says, "Mauler, can you please yeah. start voice acting? Your Star Wars videos put me to sleep like a bedtime story. Oh. Seriously <laughs> gifted." Um, Empires of the Undergrowth is a game I do narration for, so there's that if you want. Uh, that's on Steam. Other than that, maybe one day. Maybe one day. I'll do some I audiobooks. Think, I think you definitely do audiobooks. You've, you've, got, the, you've got the voice. Um, Lucifer the Doberman says, hopefully June will be good, but I am not holding my breath. Um, I, I hope it's good. It's got a good director behind it. But it's also got Zendaya in it, so nah. <laughs> Uh, it's got a really good script, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm fingers crossed. Like it's it's been delayed like forever, so when it eventually comes out, I'll be so happy. Um, Jacob Babcock says, "If Shang Chi is a generic kung fu movie, I'd be happy with that, but it's an MCU movie after all. So yeah, it's Phase Four. Who knows what it'll be? Uh, well, Andre knows, obviously." Um, yeah, a complete and tone uh, tonal mess. Like, if, where tone is concerned, it's a Frankensteinian abomination. Hey, we got mixed it mixed together by three different movies. A Frankensteinian abomination. Frankensteinian. <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Frankenstein. Oh. Perfect. Uh, speaking of ab abomination, uh, guess how long he's in the movie. As well, long as the trailer lasts. Less, less than two <laughs> seconds. Uh, point goes to ass. Yes! That was obvious. Come on, that was so obvious. It, it just it felt like a something that was completely out of step with the rest of the movie. Like it was never going to fit in. Cameo. Uh, yeah, and you're right, it didn't. It was like a complete throwaway. Just like in the trailer. Um... Here's a question. Mark Connolly says, how could Top Gun 2 be made woke? I it's, can think of a few it's ways. Delayed. Uh, so it's delayed. We won't for, yeah, they they delayed it to next year. Uh, yeah, oh, I thought I thought you meant delaying it makes it woke. <laughs> it's like, ah. well, it does it, if it gives them time to reshoot something. 
Well, like, if, I, uh, I can see a new generation of strong, independent female pilots. Yeah, be intersectional, maverick, feminist, but not necessarily woke. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think it will be. Being, uh, remember, she was she was the Avenger. That was her call sign in Captain Marvel, right? She yeah. she she was a flyer. She was the best pilot ever, but then she she got hired to do something totally different, and it would have been so much more interesting if she'd flunked out of flight school because she was like too insubordinate or something. I just think and it's it really neat that the Avengers got their name from her. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's not. Neat. You know what, what's even more neat is that Nick Fury lost his eye to a fucking cat. To a putty tat. That scratched it out. Well, I mean, that was the impression I got when he explained to Steve that he has very strong issues <laughs> trusting people, and that the last time he did, he lost an eye. I knew that was about a cat in that yeah. scene. I he was trusted like, yeah. that cat, and the cat betrayed him. Like, yeah, bastard. A cat the size of a tangerine. Yeah, they're doing that a lot, by the way. They when they develop this shit, they make it into a joke because Black Widow did it with the 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 ledger, red and the ledger thing. Yep, red, yes. yeah, red and the ledger, and the uh, the um. Uh, hysterectomies that they give to the women. Oh, so funny. So yeah. funny. Your, your ledger is dripping with blood. I could not be more proud of you. Yeah. Wow. I am stereotypical Russian idiot. By the way, it was, it was, it was really smart at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yeah. That, that wasn't just like fucking tonally fucked. It, like, I should have put it in the video, but <sighs> someone mentioned in the comment section, it's like, Loki's doing that as like a metaphor. That's a very specific one, right? The debt as a ledger for like that's what red in the ledger means. It's like your debt to almost existence. You you've uh you've taken life, you gotta give it back, that sort of thing. He's Loki's saying all of that as an interesting thought because obviously the writer behind it. But then you've got why would Alexi reference that unless he'd seen that scene? Why would he describe it in the exact oh, he, same he way? Oh, he watched the Avengers, dude. When he I think I think he did. Yeah. I think Alexi watched the Avengers. He probably liked it. Hmm. Just to go circle back to the, the topic of Top Gun 2 here, um, they're quite rightly pointing out Top Cru so, I'm sorry, Tom Cruise wouldn't allow himself to be upstaged. Yeah, he absolutely wouldn't. I, I don't see it being a woke movie. Um, but here's a possibility. Maverick's daughter is the new hotshot pilot. Her nickname, Tangerine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> ah, I can't escape the tangerines. Tangerine. I saw a pilot the size of a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Meanwhile, by the way, while Marvel do all of this, uh, Sideshow Collectibles are putting out statues like this, which resemble the uh, comic characters in their proper forms, like Black Canary. Well, hello. Oh, my. And that's that's how they're meant to be, you know? Child birth and hips right there. Oh, yeah. Wow. We've all just been cancelled. Yeah. And that's <laughs> Black Canary. Toxic, that, yeah. is, that is a really good recreation of Black Canary right there. You, you could crush a tangerine between those thighs. Oh, yeah. You could crush a tangerine between... Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, you know. Uh, what is the, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking back to like the that image that we saw of like comic book Carol Danvers where her face was like fucking sloth from the Goonies and it, it was just all fucked up. Like it was like the <laughs> worst piece of artwork of it. I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Like the Miss Piggy uh, artwork. Oh yeah. That was something pretty much like she had the body of a man and just, uh, God, Reminds Reminds been hit Gotham by high. <laughs> the Gotham high book is filled with hideous art. Everyone's all like fucked all their legs and arms and fingers are all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but just to say nothing about I am Sausage not Starfire. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus. I mean, yeah, I mean she, that, that character looks like she smells so bad it comes off the page. <laughs> oh, no. is, is it like, is she sweating constantly or is it like boils and well, stuff her that she's got? Yeah, like little, like little marks on it or something that looked like. Yeah. Are, they, fre like, uh, are they freckles or are they spots? Or they, I, don't know. I think it's cottage cheese. That's what I oh. think. Yeah. Well, it's not a sign of good health, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, not for a, how old she meant to be? 16 or something, isn't it? Yeah. I think when you're that kind of rotund shape, like just getting through life makes you sweaty. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what they were going for. The best kind of sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, Charles Hurst says, Selma is like fine wine. This is Selma Hayek. Uh, she gets better with age. She, yeah, mm-hmm. she does, man. She's, uh, yeah, she's got it. Uh, Eden so forth says, what are you three doing together on a stream on a Thursday night? I guess it was the will of the force or Kang or reasons. Uh, it was Carol Probably Danvers reasons, that brought yeah. us together. Uh, oh, Caleb. somebody sent me the uh, the front cover to SFX, which has got Dune on it. And one of the side headlines is Doctor Who, the multiverse crossover begins. No. The... Say what? Uh, so, um, more, more, <laughs> Morbius and Sylvie are going to be in uh, Doctor Strange too. I just saw that. Does that make everybody happy? Gary, I'm so tired. I know. Um, <laughs> well, who tired isn't going to be in Doctor Strange too at this point? Uh, I know Riri Williams is going to be in Wakanda forever. Dude, the cameo lists are going to get so long. The longer we go, it's like. Uh, Spider-Man 17 has Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange's daughter, Captain Marvel, Hood, Seven Sisters. <laughs> They're all yeah, going to be talking the, about... It's got the new Black Widow and the new female Hawkeye. And, uh... <sighs> the new She-Hulk, maybe? It's just... You can, uh, yeah. It's just it's definitely the law of diminishing returns. Like The more they do this, the less we care about it. and uh, it just Amen. It makes me tired. Hey, how long before they start relying on like the fucking Daredevil and Catwoman films for cameos? <laughs> because they start running out of options. Uh, that's coming before you know it. I mean, that's that may come already in Doctor Strange. <sighs> I want Halle Berry back. Halle Berry can just yeah. cross crossover universes bizarrely. It'll be great. Always forgiven. Wait, Always ooh, forgiven. But, but Kitty, they used Kitty Pride, didn't they, to do that? And now we've got Elliot Pride. Oh. I guess. They could recast him. Yeah, but why, why, why recast? I mean, it's just from another universe that Kang willed into existence, isn't it? So Kang's yeah. dead, man. Kang can't do anything yeah, anymore. Kang's dead Fuck now. Kang. Yeah. Even though Kang, Kang's going to be the bad guy in yeah, Doctor yeah, Strange, but, right? Yeah, but that was, one, one that Kang was is... like the one ultimate Kang. Like, all the others are still there. Uh, well, yeah, what's so are, they, are they lesser Kangs? Because, like, he's the one who beat all of them. What stops or, a Kang from doing all this shit again? Inventing the, you know, like snipping timelines and shit. Well, nothing, because he said the, the exact same thing at the end of Loki. He was like, if you kill me, then eventually it's going to spawn multiple timelines and eventually a Kang will emerge supreme <laughs> who's going to like prune off all the other timelines and eventually I'll just be right back where I started. It's pretty much. Yeah. I thought that was so stupid because that's not going to help that one Kang one bit because his He's life bored. ends right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's right. it doesn't matter if one like you is going to. Yeah, like, exactly. Come like, back. That, that, it's not you. It's not your consciousness. It's not that your always soul. pissed me off with like clone movies and everything. Like, dude, it's not yeah, you. Man. It's it's another replica, but it doesn't help you one bit. Like, you die right there. Well, that's why thing, if, that's why the transporters in Star Trek are so fucking terrifying because they don't yep. transport you; they just kill you yeah. and make a copy of you somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks um, like, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like the Prestige all over again. Yeah, ah. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> think about uh, Kang as well. It's like if you want to convince us, he just wants to die. He's had enough time. He's it's like he did not come across as someone who's lived for like infinite generations. He was just this dude jumping around the room like, <laughs> like I was okay. in clown school. <laughs> I am a professionally trained clowner. I know, Jesus. Why? Oh my god, we're all f- so fucked. <laughs> I mean, look at th- look, consider how Thanos was introduced, right? Very small little snippets of him gradually building up and, and eventually you got this this image of like this terrifying intimidating figure who was godlike in his power and then finally he makes his appearance in infinity war like full on uh what a way to introduce a character and build him up with kang you've got a re- goofy ridiculous clown who jumps around his office and then gets murdered by mm-hmm. strong yeah, like, character i wouldn't want to but, understate that he beats hulk in a fight and he kills the villain of the first avengers movie yeah, yeah. Fucking that only goes to show that Kang isn't the new major baddie going forward in the MCU. Actually, um, you know how everyone is like saying, no, not everyone, but like many of the people that are trying to tell you that you have to see this movie, like Chang chi mm. is because of the mid credit scene that it's so freaking mind-blowing. 
Um, again, I won't oh. spoil too much, but, um, oh, but, oh. But, the, but they're setting up something else other than Kang. Oh, uh, 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 Andre in the in the chat in the private chat. Well, they have um, to be. They have. I was going to gonna say it's got to be. It's, it's got to be Galactus, Mephisto, or Doom, right? They're like the main choices. Well, Doctor Doom is Marvel's best villain that they'll fuck up. That'll be a they'll girl. Do, they'll definitely. They, fuck they up. can't bring him in until so they Galactus, do the proper Fantastic Four movie. It'll it'll be yeah, Doctor Doom in tandem with probably Galactus or Mephisto. Mephisto would be a great villain. Uh, but like Galactus is the one everybody's looking for. But I mean, unless, unless, okay, okay, I'm gonna have to put this in private chat though. Galactus is, is it, he's a, not a villain per se. He's not like, I want, you know, Galactus does what he does. He's more neutral. Yeah. He just exists. Yeah, he's like a shark, you know? Yeah. He's a villain if he's eating you. But uh, the, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, they could they could yeah. uh, hint at Galactus, and then the Fantastic Four movie will be where he's properly introduced. They're, they are going to try to funnel all the fun, cool cosmic stuff through Captain Marvel, not Guardians of the Galaxy, because they're over after this third one to to help pump up that fucking character that nobody likes. Yeah. And that character and nobody likes, yeah. Gary. Which one are you talking about? There's a lot of them at this point. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Original, the OG Captain Marvel. Oh uh, yes, and uh, putting Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel together with Monica Rambeau—that is fabulous. This, this movie is going to be a fucking flaming train wreck with a nuclear bomb on board. I can't wait for it. I can't wait to learn so much about. I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Seriously, I just—I just realized we're going to get Captain Marvel, fucking Monica, fucking Jelly Rambo. And we're gonna get <laughs> fucking, we're gonna get cosplay summer Aminot in a fucking movie together. Yeah. Oh, fuck uh, my ass mouth and tits. Remember Iron Man? <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I it, do. Was, it was fun. It was simple. It was fun. It was Guardians and those so great. Uh, I'm watching all this good Marvel, and you know, even the the early Marvel that was considered bad is looking so much better now. Iron Man Two, I, fucking yeah, Iron Man Two. I am so Dark much forgiven towards that. Now. Yep, yeah, especially mm-hmm. Thor: The Dark World. That was like almost funny. It's actually, it's actually funny because. Uh, what's the what's the name of like the the, the chick there the um uh the friend Lady Stiff no Dark, not not Dark her friend. like the uh, no, the, character the, the, yeah the friend of Natalie Portman Darcy oh, oh Kat Dennings Darcy. yeah Darcy. Darcy. Kat Dennings yeah uh, anyway because Aquafina she's like that character only, oh she's only squared uh, so she doesn't use her black scent her what. Call my mouth oh. uh, she she uses she's been accused of using black scent like accent except oh no uh, I don't recall any of that Maybe I, I have honestly I have no idea who Aquafina is like I was on the end credits afterwards like oh, okay so that's who that annoying character was <laughs> she was so annoying oh my god this review writes itself I uh, just gotta see the movie we'll see I was I was expecting to kind of walk out of it going like five out of ten. Like it's five out of ten. Uh, well, it, it still may be. I'm just like saying it's a really schizophrenic thing, but there's like good things in it. The, the good things they just, the good thing in one scene just doesn't jive with the good things in another scene because it's like different movies. We'll, we'll find out. It, it's it's uh, return viewing. This is it's yeah. It's expected to break Labor Day weekends for what COVID. Uh, I don't expect it to break Labor Day weekends. Period. Uh, it's it's so funny how they have to now m- jump to all of these these hoops to create some kind of new record to break. The single greatest movie to open on a Thursday in this month in the pandemic that isn't part of a franchise and that was led yeah. by a female. Like all of these like little hoops just to be able to create a number one. I think if you dig far enough, you can always find some kind of record that you can break, but it's so obscure, like no one's going to give a shit about just it. Just a matter of making it specific enough. Nobody adjusts. Yeah, but then you, you are able to say, like, well, this movie's had a record breaking opening. You know, you don't have to include all the caveats to it. Halloween, The Possession, Transporter 2, One Direction, This Is Us, Jeepers Creepers 2, The American, Jeepers Creepers. Uh, those, are la- those, are, those are Labor Day weekend. 
Oh, people didn't release shit on Labor Day. Yeah, I could break the record. I think it was thirty million by Halloween. Why would you release Halloween on? Labor I was about to say, what the fuck is Halloween Labor? coming out on Labor Day? What is that? The remake <laughs> one? Uh, yeah, two thousand seven. It was the two thousand seven. Yeah, Rob Zombie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That would be why they missed the mark by a month there. But it's <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's a, it was the Weinstein's. What <laughs> could you expect? I mean, they were known for missing the mark uh, in quite a few ways. Yeah. Hey, Gary. Yeah. Who, who, you know, Nick Fury, he had a brother who became a villain. What was his name? Dick, Dick Fury. Dick Fury. Yeah. Wow. That's very offensive. And, and he became a porn star. Became a porn star. That's a great name as well. Dick Fury. Dick Fury. <laughs> Dick There's Fury. a porn star out there that's watching this stream that's gone, got it. I mean, yeah, if it's not taken, go, go for it. Uh, Dick Fury. Okay. I'll do a couple more super chats in it. I think. Oh yeah. wait, wait, wait! There's got to have been a porn oh. parody of the Avengers. Oh, there's the, yeah. What was the character? I, I can tell you the name was Nick. <laughs> what was the name of Nick Fury's character? In that was it, Dick Fury. I can tell you <laughs> off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, I have to do some research on this one. Porn parody. <laughs> Chat, come on, chat. Right. Well, let's, let's bring up the video. Come on, there's some fucking perverts in there. Come on, don't yeah. fucking pretend you're not. Big Dick Fury, Watch Skull Nick Nash Fury actually got it slut. right. Nick Fury and slut. No, <laughs> not good. <laughs> Nick Fury, no, no, I can't even say that one out loud. Um, Watch <laughs> Avengers, Nick Fury, Wasp, porn parody. Uh, Nick Fury impaling Sharon Carter's ass. What? <laughs> I'm sorry I looked that up. I just, <laughs> I'm really sorry I did. <laughs> there's, there's plenty coming in through chat. Tangerine here. Fury. Fury. Tangerine Fury. Uh, give me one yeah. second here. I just want to bring up a couple of these. Yeah, uh, of the size of a century. <laughs> Caleb uh, Sally says uh, Babylon B put up an open discussion thread on who uh, viewers want to see. Decided to add Drinker to my list. We'll see where that goes. Well, Ooh. thank you. And, uh, we will see where it goes. Mm -hmm. the Balrog of Udun says you need to do a Blade Runner happy hour with Razor Fist. He has an incredible review of the film. The Rageaholic and the Alcoholic would be incredible. <laughs> see what we can do drive-by commenter says hello drinker i like your point about empty settings in the old guard while narratively those settings are uh, to combat what back streets are to street racing or sewer levels but they could use more environmental storytelling yeah they could do a million different things with that movie if you actually give them a good sense of place like you want to set it in afghanistan great give me some decent segments in afghanistan that actually feel like that place um yeah it's just you've you've got this globe trotting adventure that you could do a million things with, and it does nothing. It just feels like London. Uh, Arella Souza gave me a super sticker, so thank you very much. Uh, Craig McDiffitt says, "Drinker, what's the drink of choice right tonight? It's Boom Boo Rum. It goes down an absolute treat, and I've been drinking it all evening." Um, D five K eleven says, "What do you guys think about the Netflix Castlevania series?" Ah. Uh... I haven't seen it. First uh, couple seasons were really good. I, I haven't it. seen it. Never saw it. it. I've heard good things about it, but I haven't seen it myself, so I couldn't tell you. Um, yeah, what's the next one? Uh, Joshua Levesque says, "Hey, drinker, what do you? Uh, sorry, hope you do more of these in future. I will. Don't worry." Um, and Caprellis Artware says, "Shun Chi is going to flop. R.I.P. M.C.U." Oh, yeah. uh, I think oh, well. probably. Um, Do you know we've got a bet with Mola Drinker? What's the bet? The bet is that uh, in the 45 days that it's exclusively out at cinemas, uh, it's got a budget of 180 million. If it makes 360 million, Mola gets 100 pounds or 100 dollars of comics each from me and Gary. Hello. If, if the more likely scenario occurs. <laughs> <laughs> if however if however life actually proceeds on plan. 
Um, then then Maul unfortunately loses a hundred each. Wow, that's uh, yeah, that's fair news. That again, I can't remember. Mahler, you said it would be a hit. Uh, fuck no, I'm just saying it. Like, money back. Make its money back. Make its money back. Yes, yeah, yeah, I I will I bet that it'll. I will I, say I, if an it gets unwise the... bet, but a fun one. I don't think yeah, it'll get. It's, yeah, it's fun. It's a it's a fun. But if regardless, we're, we're, we're going to buy I, comics I, anyway, so it's, no one's going to lose anything. I, I I think it'll do between five and six hundred million. Do you really? No, I don't think Model? it's going to get above that. What? In the forty-five days? Yeah. Are you mad? Oh my goodness! Do you Sir, on I my bet I would like to <laughs> drag you into. <laughs> I was about to say that's one hundred forty million more than what I was saying. Yeah. Woo. Uh, I uh, yeah, I can't remember. I said it did make its money back. I think I think this does. Is it going on two seven five in the in the forty five days two seven five? And it goes right on Disney Plus after that, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think uh, yeah, it'll do more than that. Uh, it did more than two seven five. Surely. What, what did uh, what did Black Widow do again? It's at five hundred right now, but th- they're including a magical one hundred and twenty million. Another 125 million. Well, no, minus 60. So like eight, uh, the, 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 like 80 something million. Uh, they magically said they got from uh, Disney Plus. Well, you know what? All those Triumph people, they might buy out cinemas everywhere to try and fluff the numbers, and I win. How uh, does Disney said it did it? Uh, Disney Plus has done 120 million. They can say whatever they want, though. Exactly. No, that's that's just the first. thing. Mahler, I have to send you a comic, a digital comic, somehow. Is it? Is it? Does it relate to this? Is that why? Or is... no? It just. I'm just thinking of it because we're gonna do King Spawn on Real BBC, so I got to send it to you. Oh sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I have? Is, would this be my first comic homework? Uh, yes, second, because you got to do. You have to do um longbow hunters too. So <laughs> <laughs> coming this Tuesday to the Real BBC. Sure. Oh shit! Sorry, let, guys. Me know, let me know what I got to read. I'll do it my magpie brain um yeah I sorry just, drinker we, we're plugging a completely <laughs> different show oh, all no, over your stream i'm so no, sorry i was i was about to say plug away because i was just thinking like there's there's <laughs> no freaking way i'm going to get through all the super chats tonight so i think i'm going to just have to do a catch-up stream and i think we're about three and a half hours in so i was toying with the idea wow. of like calling that it a night quick. there i, I no, was the grand finale quick. yeah uh, so this is a chance, gentlemen, for you to plug your your things that you've got going on. You've got the real BBC coming. Well, this is a real BBC stream. I mean, it, it I mean, is, yeah. crossover crossover stream. We've got all three uh, full time hosts now. Maul has joined us Hello. Uh, as a, as a full time host on the real BBC. So it's no longer just Gary and I. It's uh, Gary, myself, and uh, Mauler. Uh, so we do it every Tuesday, every alter- alternates between Gary's channel and my channel. Uh, this coming week, it's going to be on Gary's channel. So please check out The Real BBC uh, tomorrow night or today, if you're in the UK. Later on, we have Friday Night Tights with a couple of absolute belters of guests. Um, we got Clifton Duncan returning and we got Gothics uh, as well, making her first appearance on the show. Very excited for that. Very excited indeed. Uh, other than that, I'm streaming The Witcher on my channel. Uh, hey, I've watched yeah. some of their streams. Actually. I fucking love watching you stream. It's great. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> it's been I, it's been a great. There's been a great response from the audience, and I'm absolutely adoring doing them. So whenever I get a free moment, I'm just streaming The Witcher. We don't, um, We have to do another War Zone as well. Oh hell yeah! Oh <laughs> oh, dude, have you seen what's coming to War Zone? Uh, Judge Dread outfits. Oh shit, man! Yeah, we gotta get do. we gotta get pimped in our Judge Dreads and go around dispatching justice. Oh my god! Do for Halloween, <laughs> one of you has to dress up for, as Dread for Halloween. Do it. They want me to dress up as the bloody the red the bloody Baron from The Witcher Three because I'm a fat fuck. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Um, I need to be fat, Geralt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just punching kids into garage doors. Yeah, punching <laughs> transgender kids into the garage. <laughs> That's a great look, isn't it? Uh, it's beautiful. Um, what about Andre and, and Bolstrek? Do you have anything you'd like to let make us aware of? Uh, Bolstrek, you want to go first? Well, 
Uh, question. Who's excited for Resident Evil? Welcome to Raccoon City. Or did you talk mm. about that early? Earlier, we, we talked a little bit about it. We were so fucking excited by like Leon and uh, and Claire. It's just well, like, the, uh, they nailed it with those char- those casting choices. It's a uh, it's a Canadian movie. The <clears throat> exteriors for that were literally filmed five minutes from my house. Oh and, my really? <laughs> and I'm no shit. longer excited to say that. I got pictures. They look cool. The movie looks like shit. Yeah, I'm I'm judging that based on a picture, and I'm somebody that liked the previous Resident Evil movie. So, I, it's, yeah, we're we're all excited. So, uh, when you're you're seeing the uh, rundown apocalyptic uh, hellscape, uh, yeah, that's the city I live in. So, um, <laughs> yeah. literally, they, they didn't have to dress anything up. There's an underpass. I drive through every day on my way to work. It looks like it's in a post-apocalyptic hell. It's awesome. So, if you want to see why I'm so grumpy, watch it on video. Don't go see it in the theater. It's going to suck ass. But there, that's... Oh, yeah, I was supposed to... Um, uh, what am I doing these days? Somebody tell me. What am I doing? Uh, uh, making videos? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's that's about it. Uh, oh, I don't yell in my videos anymore by popular request. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so with uh, much Wait difficulty, I have now gone three entire videos without yelling. What? Hey. I bet it's a more therapeutic way of living, though, isn't it? Why? <clears throat> I, I, why? Why would you do that? I got tired of yelling. People were tired of the yelling. Is that so the thing setting in? Oh, well, I, I'm I'm actually I'm saving my next rant for just before uh, the next season of Doctor Who starts. Oh, there geez. will be an introductory video uh, where I'm removing my no yelling rule. Uh, yeah. So pray for my Yeti mic. Uh, but what what I have coming <laughs> forth um, again, somewhat bullied into it. But I uh, begrudgingly, I'm going to be reviewing. Fuck my life! Every episode of series thirteen. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. Womp, womp, womp. That, that's uh, that's on par with as doing all the Batwomen. Yeah, uh, I, I guess some of those. Gary, are you watching it? Oh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna suffer. We will suffer together. Okay. Uh, also, loves company. Picard season two. We have Strange New Worlds, uh, Star Trek Discovery season four. I Witcher can't do Picard, dude. It's Cobra called yours. I, season four. It's amazing. All the stuff that's coming, I'm dreading all of it. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, I came up with the uh, solution for just getting over Star Trek. I uh, so reviewed the first oh, okay. episode of season three of uh, STD. I haven't oh, watched no. it since. Oh God, it's so yeah. I don't think I'll be able to make it to a fourth. I just I don't uh, no. I I no. It's you only want to torture yourself so much, and I've committed to doing Doctor Who. I can't do that shit unless uh, I'm bullied you, into it. I, I was bullied into Loki, so maybe I'll we have the answer. <laughs> she was born a tangerine. Really. <laughs> She's no, it, it, it's a, uh, I mean, a, a diverse, a diverse tangerine. Yeah, <laughs> abandoned diverse alien space baby tangerine. Hey, well, Drinky, uh, you know, you do know that they brought into canon that the Doctor can regenerate into animals. Animals, well. yeah. Uh, oh, a, yes, yeah. and be a dragon. <sighs> Whoa. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for like alligators, just like in Loki and stuff. Oh, fucking. I hate I hate modern entertainment. Yeah, I hate uh, what it is. No, actually, the the way to get around it is do what I do. I just don't give a shit anymore. It, it, watching modern entertainment is kind of like watching an SMM S and I can't even fucking talk S and M movie. <laughs> uh, no, it's literally you're watching the entertainment industry beat the shit out of itself. Yeah, well, it's like um, you know, the, there was kind of rumors going around that. I don't know, Kathleen Kennedy was going to be staying on at, at Lucasfilm. And I just thought, fine, I just don't have to give a yeah. shit about Star Wars for however many years. Now, like, I'm just detached from it completely. Uh, I, I'm just anymore. watching. I'm not, I am at the point now where I'm not even invested in even marginally trying to save, well, not that I could, but save any of these franchises. Mm-hmm. I just don't give a shit anymore. You, you get to the point where you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I yeah. think. 
when Hollywood, it, when and if the, a turnaround happens and I see a slight one happening, I, I don't think we have a franchise standing. Maybe, maybe something. Babylon that, 5. Like Farscape, Babylon 5. Back um, to the future. That's it. Back oh, to the well, let's let's hope it happens fast because Babylon 5, they're in the process of. Uh, uh, no, sorry, that's Stargate. Forget the Stargate is the yeah. one that they're looking at doing okay. something with, not something good. But uh, yeah. no, they're try. Uh, J. Michael Straczynski wants to be the next producer of Doctor Who, and they said they didn't say yes right away. That's how. No, happy. they 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 didn't care. They they humored him. He said contact had been made, yeah. but yeah, no, they they won't allow a straight male to take over the show. Mm -hmm. and the producer wouldn't have any control over it anyway and it's too late to save it it's way too late yeah and and, and it may be on the chopping block so it's oh like no you install was it's too late to fucking save them yeah but mm -hmm. it, it, there's a there's a a kind of um relief that comes with that when you can just detach yourself from it and say there's nothing worth saving anymore there's nothing worth uh caring about so i can just mm -hmm. walk away from it don't care anymore you would think yeah, Marvel you know. would wake up, uh, but they are so up their own ass right now. Uh, yeah, Kevin Feige has become Kathleen Kennedy. Kevin Kennedy. Yep. Yeah, the, uh, he uh, he basically lived out the promise of the Dark Knight, uh, like yeah, either die young a hero yeah. or uh, mm -hmm. live to see yourself become the villain. And Dude I agree, Kevin retired. Feige at this point has become the villain. Dude should yeah. retired after Endgame. Just said, ah, we'll get it. To, uh, you know what? I disagree with that. Though. He should have recovered. He should have retired after Infinity War. To me, that is where the MCU ended. I mean, just think about it. When did Captain Marvel come and really signify that new direction? Mm -hmm. It was after Infinity War. I mean, that was the end. That was, it ended right there. Thanos snapped and he won. That's the end. And then the MCU started after that. The thing with the MCU, which is odd, is for the longest time, at least from my perspective, I saw it as a holdout from the march of woke destruction. I've been on streams probably three years ago where I was saying, well, you know what? The MCU, everything else has gone to hell. The MCU is still enjoyable. It's not Citizen Kane, but they're enjoyable movies. And I think because it was a latecomer, it decided to double, triple, and quadruple down on bullshit, and that's where we are now. Yep. But yep. The, the MCU, it's done. You'll, you'll never have again ever something like the mcu up to and including endgame and it's you can't even say they're really caring about money at this point because look at the shit that's coming out with phase four like it's it's shit but it's gonna tarnish uh, i uh when i was uh, a few weeks ago i brought this up i was watching endgame recently and even though it's only two years old to me, it actually seems dated already. Like it's a product of a bygone era. It's a product of big, overblown summer blockbusters. It's the last major thing that everybody was excited for. And even for me, because they, they've all shit the bed at this point, the comic book movie is done. And it's not as if it petered out naturally. It's DC and the MCU destroyed themselves. I'm like, you look at DC and Jesus fuck, it's actually worse than Marvel at this point. Yep. And wow. the, and they had and I still haven't seen uh, the Snyder cut of Justice League. I, at some point, I'm going to pick out the Blu-ray when it comes out and watch the two versions back to back. But at that point, they had an opportunity. Okay, drop your bullshit, birds of prey, fuck party. And pick up the Snyderverse. No, we're going to go with this. I'm like, well, then fine. Fuck you. Who's uh, who's doing your marketing? Uh, some 25-year-old. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. It's a 25-year-old girl just out of university. Well, they Somebody's they had in. everybody tricked for a minute with Joker. Um, I don't know how well Joker is going to age Total over accident. the course of time. Uh, I think it's just because we're so it's so rare that we actually see a decent 
somewhat deep movie in current year. And that only happened because uh, they really had to fight to get it made. Like the DC yeah. hedge honsos, they really fought against that movie tooth and nail. And the only way it actually got made was with them first cutting the budget and, yeah. then, uh, and then securing like international funding agreements, which meant that most of that billion dollar box office cash never went to Warner. Ha, yeah, ha. Deserves what it. a shame! What a shame! What a shame! And what did they? It's outside of the DCEU, but then what did they follow it up with? Birds of Prey, yep. which I've said <laughs> many times, it might actually be the worst movie I've ever seen, because even outside of the wokeness, even outside of the completely idiotic script, it is the worst directed movie I I think I've ever seen. Uh, the score most of the time doesn't even remotely match what's going on on screen either that or it's completely ridiculous and if anybody wants to stomach watching the movie again watch the use of adr it's awful yeah I just to actually, explain stuff no that yeah. is i totally agree to you that is one of the worst movies i've ever seen in my life like, it, it's, it's just from a production <laughs> standpoint it looks and sounds like shit. but no w watch l listen to the vocal track and watch the lips moving that entire movie does not match. I was actually the one time that I tortured myself watching it. I was distracted by that the whole time. But so yeah. that that was your a few months later, your follow up to Joker. And before the end of what I'll call old Hollywood, which was the uh, beginning of the virus of uh, unknown origin. Uh, what was the last major movie to come out? It was Birds of Prey. So old Hollywood died on Birds of Prey. Yeah. Yeah. And then it came back with. Black Widow. I think the, cool. the DCEU has just always been an absolute mess, and they've had the occasional mm. like bar of gold floating in a toilet. Oh, yeah, but but you, otherwise, you know, they, like, they shit on their bar of gold. Their bar of gold was Wonder Woman. Then came yeah. Wonder Woman. Yes, yeah. And they had. They, a, they made such a mistake of letting Kathy Jenkins like write yeah. that one. Hey wow. man, remember the narrative that the studio ruined the third act and that she didn't want it that way, and so everyone said, "Man, you should have given her her freedom." And then we did, and look what happened. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. That happens when we have women she vote. Up have one, <laughs> one, two, and three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what a disaster! Uh, yeah, yeah like to to to, to actively self-destruct like your one successful character. Um, yeah. It's just a pretty damning indictment of well, DC. And, and their on $1 billion dollar film was an, uh, one that didn't even... like. Everybody should be fired for that. For just that mistake. For giving away the one successful movie's profits. Yep. Well, Andre, you, you, you broke this like way before the movie came out. You were like, yeah, the, the test screenings were an absolute disaster. And, and people were walking out of them and just calling oh, yeah. them a complete joke. Absolutely. And like right back then, they knew it was going to be shit. Yeah, they did. It's because the, the, the problem is that the people that are responsible for this, they don't see it that way. Because just really calling the shots, it's uh, it's uh, Walter Hamada, who is good for Hodder, but he's complete incompetent for all things DC. And above him is uh, is Anne Sarnoff, who is wokier than woke. Oh, and you mentioned terrible. Birds of Prey. You know, like the irony yeah. is that uh, Walter Hamada, he only greenlit the Joker uh at maximum resistance and uh, when there were like these these funding deals which meant that there was absolutely no way that warner could lose any money of course they didn't see much of that billion dollar but just in case it would be a disaster he was the one who greenlit birds of prey to come out afterwards to make everything okay again <laughs> after joker came out and in their world flopped yeah Wow, and and they still think that they're doing awesome. Like they're still doing these incredibly shitty, shitty things. Like for instance, Walter Hamada, uh, he apparently uh, thinks that J.J. Abrams is awesome, and we really need to him to take over everything and give us his black soup and all that stuff. Fans are gonna love it. He genuinely thinks that he's that tone deaf and like that isolated in his own high castle. And of course, he's just like playing to. And Sarnoff's uh, fiddle, and she's all about wokeness and changing things out and not being too true to the source material because that's difficult. Because that means that she and the other green lighting producers should have some kind of familiarity with the source material. It's yeah. far better if they change it up 
And so instead they can assess a property on how woke it is, which is what they do. Uh, what a lovely yeah, system that they've got. <clears throat> it is. Well, um, the uh, Captain Marvel hot toy, bearing in mind that, uh, you know, Gary, you'll uh, appreciate this, that the, the hot toys of the Marvel characters, they are, they go pretty quickly, like Gamora, waitlist. Yep. Uh, Nebula, wait, waitlist, you know. So even of slightly more obscure of the characters, still really popular. Uh, Captain Marvel's deluxe figure, which clocks in at just less than 200 pounds. Uh, if you go to Sideshow, uh, not only will they give you 10% off it, uh, but they'll also ship it to you for fucking free to the UK. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Be giving them away. So they, they, are, they are struggling to get rid of their Captain Marvels big time. <clears throat> who, who would ever thought that you would want them in the first place? Like, would you want to see that face looking down at you every day? <laughs> you know what's so annoying for her as well it'd be like people are buying all kinds of marks and suits for Iron Man they'll get multiple ones all over the place it's like Captain mm. Marvel though just one one you're like no mm. I don't do that no. yeah but you can do, you can get different hairstyles for her more that's the important oh. thing oh do they, do they have the one you know the one the, the end game one, one. Oh, they, yeah. they are releasing the end game yeah. suit which is a reverse of the colors and the shorter hair the, the, one that's like basically like mine, yeah. But like short. Well, only shave the one blonde, side, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grow it down. The, the cool new haircut. Yeah. Oh, it's so it's so progressive. But progressive. yeah, listen. I I was gonna say like um as I was bringing up earlier, I don't think there's much chance I'm gonna get through all the super chats tonight. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is just uh, I'll do a catch up stream tomorrow or the day after and and do them all then um, because I'm. Aware that we've been going for almost four hours now, so it's quite long for my standards. Yeah, I know very long, long. Very long. That's that. I know that's a joke <laughs> by your standards. Long. That's These like are a rookie numbers, you. you know. Rookie yeah. numbers. You got to pump those numbers up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, listen, gentlemen. Honestly, like it's a real pleasure to have all of you on tonight. I really appreciate you giving up your time for this. Uh, this was like a. A little, a little change up for me, rather than doing a movie based thing. Just talk about whatever the fuck going on, yeah. um, and it seems like people have liked it because we had like six thousand viewers at one point. We're still around five thousand, so nice. Yeah, wow. all right, awesome. That's not bad, not bad at all. Um, yeah, so I'll re-upload this to my second channel, um, and I will put links to all of your channels on it. So please, everyone who's watching this, give a subscribe to everyone here. Uh, subscribe to Mauer, subscribe to uh, Heel vs. Babyface, go to Balls Trek and Midnight's Edge and Nerdrotic because they all produce awesome content. Um, and yeah, thank you to everybody in chat, like all the people who sent me super chats, thanks very much for that. Um, if I've, I've missed any, obviously there's still some outstanding. I will catch them um, on my next stream. I'll do a catch up. Um, and yeah, thank you to all of you. Uh, does anyone have any parting words, any any words of wisdom that you can impart to these wonderful people in chat? I have wisdom words. There are five days left to grab cuddly toys of mm. Ian Rags. Hey. So it's yeah. the, the only smart decision is to, is to... Someone in chat reminded me. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I completely forgot. Plug the plushies. It's funny. Az had to remind me to do it. Fucking Rags has to remind me. To do it. I was just like, it's just so... I forget there are toys of me, okay? It's a weird experience, but... um. You know, Rags actually managed to get over a thousand percent funded. Yeah, so, how far the, are you? The, the, the Rags, you are. the Rags plushie is pretty cute. I'll it's give, absolutely I'll give adorable. Um, my one, I think, is close. It's this nine hundred eighty-two percent. Can I, can I just say I can neither confirm nor deny that there will be a critical drinker plushie in the near oh future? Oh my god! <laughs> Don't worry, dude. We can neither confirm nor deny that there's going to be. <laughs> Hill versus Babyface, <laughs> real BBC, Friday Night Tights plushies, the whole Dude, fucking job lot. I, I, was, I was approached, and so there's stuff going on. The pe the people who are fans of like our channels, they're going to have a fucking plushie Arby by the end of like, next year. <laughs> <laughs> I had requests for body pillows, for fuck's sake. This oh, man. It's got to be the image of you weird. from Friday Night Tights, where you're just like everyone surfing you. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> 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 Um, That'd be yeah, great uh, on a body pillow. 
I'm assuming because I don't even know if there's other places that necessarily doing, but I'm guessing you were approached by makeshift because makeshift yeah. are the lads. They're good at their jobs, from what I can tell. Because we got you get little um, sample ones, so they'll probably send you one drinker and see. If yeah, you're right. so they they produced the the sort of PDF mock up of it, like you know, from different perspectives and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm happy with that. So they're gonna send do you me a... do you have a bottle? I do. Yes, I do yes. have a bottle, <laughs> yeah. and I've got the, the dressing going on and stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I'll be, uh, dude, I'll be picking that one up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, that one will be time restricted, and, and so are uh, me and Rags. There's only five more days. And they're at the top of makeshift, by the way. They're really easy to find. It's a, it's a neat little site. They're cuddly, fun things. Check them out if you want to. Um, you get a discount if you grab them both because we be the e fappy people. Nice. Uh, yeah, I will put links to them as well in the description when I re-upload this, so um, it will all be there. So please you give yourself much, a, a mower and a rags plushie. Yes. And for other words of wisdom, we have Kamran Pasha joining us in our morning stream tomorrow at the 9 a.m. LA time, so do check that out over at Midtown's Edge. Nice. Excellent. Uh, yeah, you guys are you're streaming like every... Two days, is it? No, Sorry, every we... uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the main channel, and then yeah. Tuesdays and Thursdays on Midnight Edge Espanol and uh, the more funny channel After Dark. Super appeal, nice. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, well, I think we'll pretty much out there. So um, yeah, I guess we're we're going to finish up there. So that is all we've got for tonight. So we're going to go away now. Goodbye, everybody.